Hello, chat. Andrew, how could you forget? It's stream day. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how I forgot it was stream day today. I knew it was Sunday. Um, I had another thing this morning, which I guess overrode the idea of having a stream, so... Anyway, I'm here now. Whatever. Uh, it all comes out in the wash. Time becomes a blur <laughs> yet. Rate my banger song out of 10. Yes, Doc Breeb in chat created this abomination you're listening to now. Uh, I mean that affectionately, of course. At uncanny uh, Bergen trucking with Spamton's sound font and percussion. It makes my skin crawl, kind of, just listening to it. Um, there's a lot of good fan content coming out for these streams, actually, I gotta say. A lot of good uh, fan art, um, surprising amount of music, too, which I'm not used to seeing. How many plot strings do we have to finish today? I don't care if you finish today. I'll give this two more streams if we need to. I'll give it three more streams, I don't care. Uh, we're just gonna see how this goes, basically. Um, I have a... I'm a bit worried about how much control I'm taking over the narrative here, but... Um, that seemed to be the way... Like when Jabroni Mike did these streams, too. That's what these are sort of based on. He ended up, the further it went on, it sort of turned into a Homestuck deal, where he was he was wresting more and more authorial control from chat. Um, but that was also because chat just wasn't giving him any useful uh, useful ideas anymore, so... Um, I think that's natural, but I, I, I'm i trying to keep uh, the door open to let chat lead the way a bit. So for today... Basically, um, I have a, a pretty good idea of where the last scene we're working on is going to end. <clears throat> But beyond that, um, I really haven't made any plans. Oh, my voice is going, sorry. <clears throat> Let me get some, some tea out. So, so going forward, after this scene with the, um, the meeting, the, the conference, I have no idea what happens after that. So, that's gonna be a clusterfuck. We're gonna go off the rails, probably. Ordeal missed last stream, where l luckily for you, Ordeal, uh, we start the stream off with a read-through of the entire fic, for anyone who hasn't seen this before, basically. Uh, yeah, we left off on the cardboard sands. Okay, um... I'm just gonna stubble my, uh, my tea cools off here, because I don't want to start reading from the top without my tea. Maybe I'll turn off our, our banger here, and put on the lo-fi beats. There we go. You're probably going to make a sans song for this. Oh, hype. Very hype, Dr. Breeb. Remnant is taking a caffeine pill for the stream. Holy shit. A goal would be getting Chris involved in the plot somehow. That's a good idea, yep. That was part of um, Irina's original specifications, was uh, that Chris and Noelle should be involved to some extent. We haven't seen Noelle at all yet. Maybe having a Noelle scene would be good today. Because um, at some point we have to we have to check in on how uh, Mayor Holidays is handling all this. We have to see her hatching her, uh, her countermeasures and scheming in her um, secret lair. So Noel might be involved in that. That could happen. <laughs> the song that would play if Sans ran for me here. Sounds about right. Here comes the grub, here comes the grub, here comes the grub. Something like that. The Spamton Birth Song. <laughs> Ordeal, you write the most abominable things sometimes. I'm really not sure. The Spamton Birth Song. Like the drummer boy, but for Spamton. Oh my god. Outson, 
does not like the nerdly arc. Should I address the nerdly arc? I don't know what the nerdly arc's really doing at this point. I feel like it's gone off the rails. Um, but there's been an attempt to... People were spamming this in chat in the previous streams, and I literally didn't know what they were fucking talking about. That's the, if, if you want to like sp try to like force a meme and bandwagon the idea, the streamer has to know what you actually mean. Otherwise, it's just a word that keeps appearing in chat. Uh, and I ignore it, because I assume that it's for some ulterior purpose. But um, I believe all that the nerdly cult wants is for Birdly not to be in the, in the fanfic, but instead an alternate character named Nerdly, who's not Birdly. Uh, and he maybe runs a meth lab. I think that's basically it. I'm not sure. Well, I know why everyone thinks it's so funny. It's because it's... It's because you've been spamming it in chat for so long that it's become funny, but... But I feel like I kind of gave my ruling on the whole Birdly Meth Lab situation, where... The plot may escalate to a point where that's a perfectly natural thing to include. But we're not quite there yet. I'm trying to cram some burning hot tea down my throat real quick here. Let's all gaslight Andrew into thinking iodized radiation is a meme. I'm pretty sure you mean ionizing radiation. I don't think you can add iodine to radiation, but maybe I just, I'm not good enough at chemistry to know how to do that. Anyway, um, I think I can do a read through now. I've managed to get some tea down. Vavoom vavoom, we have a fanfic. You always thought the Sans was the meth guy. Well, it, the last stream kind of implies that at least Asgore thinks Sans is some sort of drug dealer. I'm not sure. I may regret writing that, but I guess we roll with it. It's, it's in the fic now, so we roll with it. All right. Hometown 20x teen. One week until the municipal election. A large monster carrying a poster board elbows his way through the doors of City Hall. The desk clerk lifts a quizzical finger in response. The intruder offers a helpless smile as he stumbles past in a rush, poster board banging off a framed photo of the town hanging on a nearby wall. I'm reconsidering this. The fic is very long at this point. It's gonna take like, perhaps like half an hour to read through the whole thing. What if I just go from where we started last stream? Because uh, it's going to be prohibitively time-consuming to keep reading this, even once per stream at this point. Read the latter half. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, the recap's going to be so long that I lose my voice before we do anything. That's that's my fear, exactly. Uh, okay, we made it past the whipped cream delivery man. This was the first scene here with Napstablook, really. Where can you read the entire thing? Uh, I did post it in chat before. Oh yeah, one thing I wanted to address from last stream that I'd almost forgotten about, right? Um, so I was linking the dock, and we had people sort of mass joining the dock. Um, if it's zoomed in like this, you can't actually see it. Oh, people are already, already reading it. Um, okay, if people already have the link, can you just post that in chat? Or no, maybe you can't post it in chat unless you're a mod, actually. Can a mod maybe find the link to the dock and put it in chat? Or I guess I could just do it myself. But okay, what I was saying is, if, if I'm going to link the dock, I, d I don't want 90 people piling in here. Uh, it didn't have any adverse effects last time, but it could potentially cause, like, uh, errors in the dock or something. Also, what I absolutely don't want to see, uh, my email account apparently was spammed with a bunch of edit requests, which I didn't know was a thing you could do. You can just go to a dock and spam someone's email with a request to edit it. Um, if anyone does that this stream, I will track down the account that did it, and I will ban you from the stream. Uh, I was extremely unamused to see that last time. Uh, no one do that. No one do that. And I've said that you can now, which may inadvertently make more people do that, but people were doing it last time anyway, so... Apparently it's no secret. I considered, in fact, 
going back and, and seeing who'd done it in the previous stream and banning them preemptively, but I thought it's only fair if I address it first. Um, and just say, don't do that again. Can I turn that off? I don't know. I'm not sure. I could check in the, uh, the sharing settings, I guess. Um, I don't see a setting for that anywhere, no. Anyway, I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's get rid of that. We already have uh, Algae Satchel back at it. More like Money Satchel on my right. <laughs> $5 though, thanks. Uh, Chris, do you want some grugs? Chris looks confused at Sans. Cringe. Chris then walks away slowly. See, we're not in the scene yet. You, you, you're jumping the gun a bit, uh, Al Algae Satchel. We're, we're, we're not in, in a remotely close vicinity to any, any way that we could have Sans dealing drugs yet. Uh, yes, Algae is single-handedly funding Asgore's campaign. <laughs> this is how it works in the real world too, yeah. Cringe is ki Chris's catchphrase is Kino. Yeah, <laughs> Chris Chris gets the whole fic only saying cringe. Very cool idea, Utsun. Okay, I should read the scene though. Enough stalling. Napstablik lay awake in bed, the first rays of morning sun filtering through the curtains and illuminating the stray motes of dust flitting through the air of their room. Their usual routine was to stare at the ceiling, feeling pure, all-consuming apathy for at least 30 minutes before phasing through the sheets and starting the day. This, Napstablik realized, could reasonably be called a waste of time, but to them it felt different. The small moment of total inaction serving as an implicit rebellion against the torrent of responsibilities that characterized their adult life. A span of haphazard meditation by which their mind could prepare for the storm to come. For at least these 30 fleeting minutes, they could call themselves well and truly... Uh, hang on. A vote, 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 vote for the barrier is a vote for freedom! The noise flooded through the window, the walls, the ground itself. The single loudest sound Napstablook had ever heard, despite being the hometown police force's resident siren operator. The fleeting motes of dust became a small downpour as the ceiling shuddered from the force of the vibration. Bleary-eyed, they drifted to the window and pulled back the drapes. The source of the noise was what appeared to be a decrepit pickup truck being driven through the town streets, its bed taken up by a hastily erected billboard covered in electoral propaganda. An array of speaker cones was bolted to the roof, repeating the same 15 seconds of audio in an endless loop. Um, vote Asgore! Vote, vote oh, Asgore! Asgore. Sure enough, Nabstablik watched as a steady stream of similarly disturbed residents trickled from their homes to observe the ruckus. Harold clawed his way through the pet flap with his morning coffee and squinted at the van. Braddy jogged down the street in her pajamas, trying to get a better look. QC, the diner owner, appeared from around the corner, dragging a baseball bat behind her. As the crowd grew in density, the, fan, the van was forced to stop in front of Napstablik's house. Through the windshield, they could make out a pale mass sitting behind the wheel, initially seeming to be Asgore, but that impression was quickly shattered when the figure turned its head forward and revealed a foot-long nose. Chat says, I like the, how this implies hometown has ever needed to use a siren despite being a small town with little going on. Well, Napstablik turns on the alarm, though, when the jail the jailbreak happens in uh, chapter 2, I think? You go, bam, 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 bam. They, they do have a siren. God knows what it's for. What's that gosh darn racket? Bellowed Harold, advancing toward the truck. QC approached from the opposite side, cutting off its escape routes. The mysterious driver begins to visibly panic and shifts gears several times between drive and reverse for seemingly no reason. Burn off that bloody noise, meow. A froggit croaks from the sidelines, jumping onto the vehicle's hood and visibly denting it. QC hits a tail light with her bat. Suddenly, the truck's tires squeal, and it attempts a desperate U-turn, only to be cut off by a police car bursting from the back wall of Sans's convenience store, showering the crowd in rubble and frozen pizzas. Within a split second, Undyne has crawled from the wreckage, and moments later, Mayor Holiday emerges gracefully behind her. Drop the weapons now! Undyne screams, somehow overpowering the truck's speaker system. You see sheepishly drops her baseball bat. Not you! Pick that back up! 
The truck's driver whips their head toward the new threat, only to accidentally pierce their 14-inch nose through the window. After spending several seconds extracting it and loudly grunting in pain, they slowly crank the window down. What seems to be the- No problem here, officer! This is a presidential campaign! Napstabluk, who was merely watching from their half-draped window this whole time, realized that they should probably go help since they were a, a police officer. Oh, they sighed and drifted through the wall, hoping everyone would still recognize them without their cap, which was inconveniently on the other side of the room and slightly too much of a bother to go and fetch first. <clears throat> they, they drifted through the truck's door behind the driver's back and now observed the entity clearly for the first time. It appeared to be a middle-aged human wearing a frayed black suit, with all visible skin caked in white makeup. Napsablik momentarily second-guessed the human part when taking into account the driver's 40-centimeter armor-piercing nose, but quickly stifled this thought for fear that it was somehow culturally insensitive. <clears throat> Another five bucks from Algae Satchel already. We're not even writing yet. You, sh you should save your, your funds for when you're in the writing, Algae Satchel, but thank you for the five dollars. Uh, whenever the vote for the barrier thing happens, I have to turn my sound down or think I'll get a noise complaint at my apartment. How loud is your sound turned up? <laughs> it's, uh, I think the, um, Windows Media Player is currently at about 10% volume. As go, as go, as go. And that's still how loud it is. Uh, I'm assuming that's a feature of the stream rather than a bug, though. Excuse me, sir. I think I think you should maybe turn the volume down. The driver loosed a guttural scream and swung toward the ghost that was suddenly speaking over his shoulder, nose swishing harmlessly through Napstablik's ectoplasm. Spirits from beyond the grave! Napstablik suddenly found himself outside the truck again as the driver gunned the engine and reversed into Harold's mailbox. The truck caught briefly on the post, but the driver scurried out the back with inhuman speed and devoured the mailbox hole to clear the path before continuing his vehicular treat in reverse, with Undyne sprinting close behind. Faintly, Napstablik heard a goddamn which animal says oink, time to skedaddle, this popsicle stand, echo over the screech of burning rubber. Oh, chat says louder, louder. For the sake of uh, health and safety, uh, I'm not going to play it at full volume. As the commotion faded off into the distance and the crowd was left standing in catatonic silence, all eyes gradually drifted toward a figure walking calmly down the sidewalk toward the corner, whistling washing on the Siegfried line. Howdy, everyone, Asgore greeted affably. All up bright and early to attend the mayoral debate, I see. Receiving no reply, he continued to stroll through the mob and directly past Mayor Holiday, who stood with three limbs crossed amid the wreckage of Sans's store. What? she asked with barely constrained venom. Was that. I see you all met my campaign manager, Asgore stated as if that explained everything. Well, do any of you feel more confident in my platform already? He's quite a wizard at this. <laughs> he chuckled. He quickly plotted his way out of sight, heading towards City Hall. From somewhere inside the gaping hole in the store, Sans could be heard musing. Oh, I've been meaning to get a drive through installed. Is the audio available? It's posted somewhere in the uh, my Discord server in the Arts and Crafts channel. Uh, it was a while ago, though. Alright. Oh, there's a thread for it, yeah. I'm sure someone would repost the audio for you if you asked nicely. The previous night. Asgore crouched, trembling behind his overturned fridge, a steady stream of pickle juice trickling from the open drawer. Drickling from the open drawer. That's a unique spoonerism. Trickling from the open door. The swarm of buzzing long-nosed pixies was still churning over the remains of the toaster, having burst from its every orifice amid a pillar of suffocating black smoke several minutes prior. Asgore had no idea what the creatures were, but had the overwhelming instinctive sense that they would bite exposed flesh and or wallets, and so dive rolled behind his fridge in hopes of escaping their notice. Now, though, it seemed the movements of the swarm were slowing. Gradually, from its center, he could make out the Umris, footnote one. Footnote one. Uh, translator's note, Umris is German for outline. Oh, that's good. Hey, two dollars from Irving the Fourth. Oh, it's happening. It, it do be happening, and it will keep happening for quite a while, I, I'm afraid to say. Thank you for that. A solid 
uh, cheap, that's staying in, a solid cheap coalescing from the chaos. Without warning, a booming voice issued from the mass. Press F1 to help! Oh God, please help! The message repeated every four seconds at gradually increasing volume. Not knowing what else to do, Asgore crawled through the double doors to his back room. He clambered to his feet and began to scrounge through the piles of dusty boxes for his old Commodore keyboard, a remnant of his long broken store computer. Ducking his head under the hanging pair of ice skates he couldn't remember buying, and skirting carefully around the piles of dust from Asriel's dead body, his hand at last brushed against the creaky plastic keys, and he sprinted back toward the site of the ritual with the peripheral in tow. The plea to press F1 was now looping several times per second at jet engine frequencies. Touching his ears, Asgore desperately depressed the F1 key. With a clap of thunder that shook spiders from the rafters, the swarm shrank to a point like a collapsing star, and from the singularity appeared a pudgy human in a white turtleneck sweater and black vest. He fell several feet to the ground, landing on his amply sized ass cheeks and shaking the remaining spiders from the roof. There was a secondary thud as a purple spider monster in lace pantaloons impacted the floor and scuttled downstairs before Michelle Tchaikovsky's lawyers could notice her presence. Spamton ass! Spamton ass! Says chat. Very th good, thank you. The human, still sitting on the floor, swiveled his half-yard nose to and fro, surveying his surroundings. After a few moments, he turned to face Asgore, nose vibrating like a doorstop from the sudden deceleration. Damn, bitch, you live like this? He seemed to levitate to his feet. Hochi daddy! These are some sweet digs thence filling the room with a screeching noise resembling laughter. His, no his nose drifts downward, carrying with it the rest of his face to point at Asgore's knee, which had been scraped during his prior dive roll away from the toaster. Picked up a complimentary boo-boo for my reincarnation. No problemo! He leans in closer, half-meter nose stabbing into the gash and causing Asgore to fall to his knees in pain. Thus brought down to the man's eye level, and with his nose resting clamily against his cheek, Asgore observed that his face was caked in an icing thick layer of white foundation that was already beginning to flake, flake off his increasingly sweaty skin, seemingly exposing yet more foundation underneath. His breath smelled like seawater. Without elaboration, the man produced a blue egg and pushed it slowly into Asgore's passively gaping mouth. The taste was, Asgore regained consciousness. The scrape on his knee had indeed been healed. The man was leaning over him like a vulture. He jutted out a hand. Spamton X Spamton, he announced. Number, number one, number one, rated Milkman, 1996. He looked briefly uncertain. I mean campaign manager. Asgore blinked groggily and, limped past, uh, and limply grasped Spamton's hand, trying to ignore the fact that his mouth tasted like blood despite having no blood in his body and having no reason to know what it would taste like. The sweet taste of Peepus, yes. Howdy, so good to finally meet you, he croaked. My name is... Mr. Creamer, Spamton shouted. Our mysterious benefactor told me all about you. Don't worry about one, one thing, you big Nubian dilf. When I'm run through with you, you'll be the biggest shot this Sukhobli town's ever seen. Is the Milkman line in reference to something? It's in reference to a chat request, yes. And also Psychonauts, but I haven't played Psychonauts, so. How could I forget about the famous Nightmare line? Did I skip a line? I have no idea how to pronounce this, by the way, so I'm, I'm just rendering it as Sukabliat, because that's uh, unfortunately the closest I can get. Oh, you were referring to Everybody Bleeds. I realized, I think later in the fic, I actually reference uh, blood rising in Asgore's cheeks completely by accident. <laughs> so it's like, e even within the fic, it's inconsistent whether monsters bleed or not. Wouldn't people hear the super loud plea for F1? Maybe? I don't know. That's it's, it's $2 from Algy Satchel to say that. Thank you very much. W would they hear the super loud plea? I mean, who's nearby Asgore? They probably just think he's watching TV or something. We're, we're skimming over a lot of details like this for the sake of having uh, human spam to materialize uh, in Asgore's attic. Oh 
Oh, you're trying to translate this text. I believe it just means like motherfucker or something. Uh, I forget what the exact language ended up being. I was just pulling chat for uh, various expletives in Cyrillic text. Uh, Asgor nodded vacantly. Ah, uh, that sounds quite nice, I suppose, but, uh, about the, uh... I just gotta ask one thing, Spamton cut him off. Why do you do it? What kind of palm grease does it take to get a marketable plushie like you into politics? Asgore's face lit up, suddenly regaining a foothold in the proceedings. Oh, well, it's really quite simple. A nice young man, uh, a nice man on the phone yesterday explained that if I were only to become mayor, I could designate my flower shop as a heritage property and appoint myself its publicly funded caretaker. That way, I wouldn't have to worry about selling the flowers to pay rent, and I could just give them out to the community whenever I wanted. His expression darkened somewhat. And also, I could maybe afford to eat again. I like a man with ambition, Mr. Dad Guy. You've got guts, just like all mammalian life. Uh, 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 yes. Asgore chuckled nervously, struggling to rise from his back into a more dignified position from which to conduct political dealings. How much has been written, asks chat. 18 pages. We're, it's getting quite deep into it. Well, Mr. Spamton, I'm excited to work with you. We should make an excellent team. You can be the brains and I can be the, uh, mayor. For my platform, I was considering a focus on community togetherness and philanthropy. The school has been too underfunded of late as to even buy enough chalk. I was thinking a significant diversion of funds into- Holy heaven, that's boring, Spamton screamed. Shut your ass up, mutton chops. Well, I'm your agent, your soapbox is whatever I say it is. Asgore tried to hide the hurt expression creeping over his face. Oh, um, well, what might that be then? Let me check, Spamton says, Audrey scuttling downstairs and out the door. Just sit tight and hold on to your dignity. That's half an umerus. Yes, we're, we're um, almost half an umerus, I think. Give Susie a hat and never explain it. I don't know if Susie's ever going to be in this fic at this rate. Uh, she doesn't currently have a role. A large monster carrying a poster board elbowed his way through the doors of City Hall. The desk clerk ha uh, have him? I'm going to fix that one. He gave him a completely nonplussed tweet, a twitch of the finger, and Asgore offered his most jovial smile in return as he shuffled his way toward the meeting hall. He jaunted down the length of the hallway and pushed his way through the doors. He should be the first to arrive this morning, which left plenty of time to set up and collect his Hiya. Yeah. Sans was sitting there with the uh, Sans was there, sitting with the eerie stillness. Let me try a third time. Thans was there, sitting with eerie stillness behind one of the three extra cheap folding tables arrayed at the arrayed at the front of the room. The cord of a lapel mic trailed across the stage and terminated on his hoodie, despite the fact that a wireless PA system had been installed in the room last month. Asgore jumped, but quickly recovered. Howdy there, Sams. You are, uh, rather early, are you not? Hey, don't worry, I'll give you a full refund. Ha <laughs> ha, mm, yes. Asgore paced toward the stage. So, he uncharacteristically struggled to make conversation. Something about this janitor always managed to throw him off kilter. How has this whole campaigning thing been treating you? I know for myself it has been quite the adjustment. Maybe it's a little strange, but sometimes it's nice to have someone call you out for being lazy. I suppose you are right about that, Asgore mused while fumbling with his own lapel mic. Back in my college days, I admit I was a bit of a slacker myself. I never dreamed I could have made it as far as chief of police, let alone mayor. But I suppose Toriel has a way of bringing out the best in. He trailed off. You just arrived? What the heck is happening? It's hard to explain. You'll just have to uh, improvise here. Yep, I'm still doing the recap. You haven't missed the rating. Someone who sincerely likes bad jokes has an integrity you can't say no to. Asgore chuckled at that despite himself. Toriel and I had so many things in common, but I'm afraid to say our sense of humor was not one of them. It was something I never appreciated about her enough. Uh, more for me. Asgore bit his tongue, unsure how to respond to that. 
He instead busied himself for a time persuading his poster board to stand upright on the table. Eventually, he turned back to the skeleton, unable to contain the question at the tip of his tongue. So, you and Toriel, you have been spending a lot of time together of late, have you not? Uh, weird, huh? Yes, you could say that, Asgore muttered, brows furrowing. I suppose what I mean to say is, uh, I was wondering if you two had, you know... His throat begins to tighten with mounting horror at the words coming from his mouth. He tried to think of some way to recontextualize his meaning, but... Well, that's, uh, really childish. Asgore winced and felt blood rise in his cheeks. There it is. <laughs> Asgore is confirmed to have and not have blood within the same few pages. Um, now he'd done it. He was once again hopelessly trapped in the machinations of his own choices. All he could hope for now is that the crowd would start filling in soon. What's the holdup? Look, there's nothing to be afraid of. As uh, Sans paused and Asgore sheepishly looked over. I'll be frank with you. It's time you learned the truth. What truth? Asgore pressed, voice growing darker despite his best efforts. I'm practically a hot dog tycoon now. Asgore's grip on the table, table tightened. I've decided it's not going to be your turn, ever. I'm just going to keep having my turn until you give up. The skeleton's face remained as impassive as ever, not ever wanting, uh, not ever turning to make eye contact with his rival. Take it from me, kid. Someday, you gotta learn when to quit. I'd very much prefer it, Asgore said, sl slowly, icy rage permeating every syllable. If a good-for-nothing dope head like yourself would stop calling me kid. He flipped the table, words echoing around the auditorium. Even then, Sands didn't move. After what felt like an eternity, he responded, Here comes the grub. Asgore stood, frozen in place, hands still clenched from throwing the table. Uh, oh, two dollars from Irving the Fourth, real quick. Asgore gained blood from eating the peepus. Cannon. That's canon now. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Here comes the grub. <laughs> he heard tendons in his neck creak as he turned to face the skeleton in total confusion. Here comes the grub. I just baked a thousand million pies. You want any? Make sure to brush your teeth before crossing the street, Frisk. As much as like putting hot dogs on your head. At this moment, Sans walked through the door in the back of the room. Boom. Now we're caught up. So for anyone who is unaware... Um, Asgore was talking to a cardboard cutout that whole time, playing pre-recorded lines from Undertale. It was not Sans. Um, Sans has set up a mannequin here that will automatically, uh, do the press conference for him, uh, because he just doesn't want to attend it, and he's just gonna go and man his store. Ha <laughs> You knew something was up when Sans was early. There we go. Someone's paying attention. So, we had great fun cobbling this bit together last stream. And now uh, Sans actually comes in the room and breaks it up. He's there to replace the batteries. Perfect. Perfect suggestion. Is Sans going to use lines from Undertale the entire debate? Yes. And then something else may happen. Okay, we actual Sans is now talking to Asgore. The actual Heia now. Uh, another five bucks from Algie Satchel. Thank you very much. Uh, so how did you like the prank, guys? Go did you flip the table over? Yeah, basically. Basically that, yeah. Sans wasn't intentionally trying to prank Asgore, but like, <laughs> you know. You had to have some idea of what the, the possible ramifications were. Or he'll walk in to see Asgore making out with the cardboard cutout. <laughs> we're not quite in that direction yet. If it came up with a different set of randomly generated lines, maybe. You can write your fan fan fiction where that happens.
That could be a fun, like, subgenre of fanfic. Just see how far you can get progressing your own plot goals with just reusing Sans's lines from Undertale. Oh, Sans is going on a date with Toriel? That's even worse, Outsin. You're fucking evil, Outsin. But I kinda like it. I kinda like that. Because that also takes Toriel out of the, the debate, because she already had her moment like harassing him last time. Oh, hey, he said, waddling up toward the stage. Looks like that thing's a, a bit low on power. He said, waddling up toward the stage and carefully not acknowledging the table lodged somewhere in the back row of seats. Looks like that thing's uh, running a bit low on power, huh? There we go. What if I made fake sands have a similar but different font from normal sands, says LG Satchel for $5. I wonder if I could do that. If I, like, change the size by one... I think that would be part of like a post-processing pass I would apply to this. If I was to publish this, like... Because uh, Sans's font is already kind of weirdly big, I'd probably knock that down a few sizes, but I just don't want to take time during the stream to, uh, to fiddle with stuff like that. But, but that may be an idea that I employ if I like finalize this and, and like, publish it to AO3 or something. Publish a physical copy. That's already getting done with the, the Umris endings as far as I know. I, I have no control over that, but someone just decided to do it, so... When I publish it, not if. Yeah, I'll publish it somehow. Can I do different fonts in AO3? I think so, maybe? I forget, actually. I, I have published a fic to AO3 before, I have to admit, uh, and it did have sans in it, I have to admit, but I forget if you can do it. You've seen pester logs and shit. Okay, if, if you can pull off Homestuck, then you can probably pull off whatever you want. Uh, okay. There's an Undertale work skin. Ah, so I've learned suddenly that there's a thing called a work skin and that you can use it to do Undertale stuff. Wonderful. Of course someone's thought of it. Uh, someone before was mentioning having the barrier as a way um, it to have Asgore's campaign spiral into anti-human bullshit. Uh, yeah, th that could be a connection. The whole, like, a vote for the barrier thing was made before the streams as a reference to something else, but we, we could use that. Okay.
you quickly realize that no response will be forthcoming. I think Sans has to like pretend as if he doesn't know what, what's wrong. Sans can't let the, uh, you know, he, he can't let Asgore in on the bit. Is this within Jaru canon? Kind of. It's it's within our canon ultimately, but elements of Jaru canon may be uh, adopted. Asriel's currently dead. That's one good good point. YouTube never notifies me when you start streaming. Uh, if you really want to know, you can join the Discord server and get pinged. That that's the a way to make sure you get the notification. Sans should offer Asgore a glass of fruit punch. Beautiful! What a cordial gesture. Maybe Sans is like, oh, is this thing annoying you? I'm sorry for that. Sans, <laughs> oh sorry, you met my brother. <laughs> the pirates is a cardboard cutout. Uh, how about Jevil be Sans's campaign manager? No, uh, y you're my co-authors. I, I should let you in on what's happening here. Um, I, I want Sans's campaign manager to be Gaster. That's what I want. It's Gaster's not the man on the phone. He's just Sans's campaign manager. Uh, <laughs> and he has a very peculiar approach. Make Gaster a senile idiot. Something like that, yeah. The man on the phone is someone else? Yes, I actually have no idea who the man on the phone is currently. Um, it's not that I'm keeping it secret, it's that I have no idea. Uh, it has to be filled in later. Why wouldn't Tori be Sans' campaign manager? Because uh, Sans wanted to do it himself. He was like, don't worry Tori, I know a guy. There's nothing to say that Toriel is going to be into politics, right? Yeah, Toriel's got other stuff to do. Asgore is an unemployed bum, so he can do it. Sans is Sans, so you know. He doesn't say sorry twice. Uh, five dollars from Doc Breeb. Uh, Gaster's theme with Sans light motif or vice versa? Oh, that's an interesting thought. Uh, so, so like the Sans, but with Gaster's theme in it. Um, if if you're going to make a, a stream song, I assume you mean. I think what would make sense canonically is. Uh, it's it's Sans's theme, but it sounds like Gaster's theme. I think that's the deal. Like Sans's motif, but it's in the in the style of Gaster's theme. I actually had fun the other night trying to recreate Gaster's theme as well as I could in FL Studio. Uh, I think I got it not super close, but fairly close. Um, I think Toby could have just been using FL keys because he does use FL Studio, so I, I was trying that. I just slapped some. 
uh, some distortion, some delay, some really wet reverb onto it. Uh, I think it was kind of getting there. Anyway, that, that's just beside the point completely. So Sans has to explain what he's up to here, basically. Maybe the person on the phone is Chris trying to stop Sans from being their dad. That's possible. That's possible. Anything's possible. Who is phone? Maybe it was Senator Armstrong all along. Who knows? The world is our oyster. Gaster's theme is the piano from Chrono Trigger. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. The guy on the phone is Jaru. That's pretty funny, actually. Oh, is this thing been pestering you? Oh, sorry about that. It's just something I got my bro to set up to help with the workload. I think Sans should like level with Asgore here. He's, they're in a room together, they're alone. Sans is like, I don't really give a shit about winning this. Uh, I'm just I'm just trying to make Toriel happy. Uh, good luck, buddy. Then, then he leaves. But of course, being Sans, he will accrue votes nonetheless through happenstance. Asgore is currently still speechless, yes. We're in the speechless Asgore arc remnant. Uh, we haven't actually acknowledged that it's a cardboard cutout yet. Maybe I should just do it like... In, in a weird, like, non-diegetic way. <laughs> he gestured to the cardboard cutout of himself sitting beside Asgore. It's just acknowledged in the in the narration that it's it's a cardboard cutout. There we go. <laughs> and it has been the whole time. <clears throat> First Sansgore moment. Having a conversation in an empty room doesn't mean that they have to kiss afterward. Maybe they can, but they don't have to. The, the cutout gets ketchup on it and it makes it soggy. That's pretty funny. I'll, I'll try to think of some way to do that. Sans mourns the loss of Sans cut out, yeah. <laughs> Asgore spills water on the cutout and thinks that he killed Sans. Uh, we're too late, unfortunately. That could have been the way the scene went, scene went but uh, we've we've missed the boat. Sans turned the cutout around, exposing the massive wiring behind it.
and clumsily replaced its two AAA batteries. <laughs> Uh, was the cutout Gaster's idea or Sans's? Uh, Sans's idea, but you know, Gaster helps with the execution. It was not Papyrus. That would be silly. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> you, you raise a good point there, chat. Uh, it, sort of the way the scene setup implies that Asgore has been looking at this cutout from the side. However, I counter that you with the idea that the cutout is metaphysically a billboarded doom sprite that will just face whoever's looking at it and it's never addressed. Perfect. Solution. I'm not currently pizza-pilled. What? What on earth does that mean? The man on the phone is Capino Spaghetti from Pizza Tower. Oh, that guy. Yeah, that's true. I don't really know about Pizza Tower. You're right about that. There's a knob labeled sentience with that explanation. I love that. Okay, I sh I'll add some more detail. Is that not how you spell labeled? Huh, when else? Who knew? Uh, knobs with labels like. Is that how you spell chutzpah? Bone pun frequency. Oxford comma Andy? I do like Oxford commas. You're right. You're right, Edson. In original Hebrew. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit too authentic. Um, is it CH? Okay. Chitspa. You know what? I'll, I'll use the fucking Hebrew. It's funny. With the black bat, it's really funny. Uh, wait, we don't need the... Can I just... Oh my god, what have I done? No. No. I failed the pace without formatting. No highlight black text. I've done it, okay. Shift control C or V paste without formatting. It is shift control, okay. I thought it was uh, control alt for some reason. Perfect, there's also a bottle of ketchup for some reason. He clumsily replaced two of its AAA batteries. Uh, Asgore should say something eventually, and then uh, Sans sort of opens his heart to him and says, I don't actually want to win the election, I think. Ralsey runs for mayor trying to put a communist system for no reason. That would be funny if at the very end, Ralsey just shows up as, a, as like a, an independent communist party with no explanation and it's never addressed again. Or maybe Asgore like tries to play it cool. Completely in vain. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, oh, um, no, not at all. It was quite all right, Sans. Not at all. I was just having some difficulty with unfolding my table. Perfect, Hansko. Uh, Two dollars from Irving the Fourth. Ketchup IV drip into a PC running Undertale. Uh, yes, that's implicit. I don't think I can put any more detail into this without bloating it, though. That's canonically what's happening, though. Uh, thank you for that, and a, a big old ten dollar donation from Algae Satchel. It says a uh, Stanley Parable music starts playing, and then Asgore realized something. Am I supposed to read that in the uh, narrator voice? I can't really. And then Asgore realized something crucial to the story that Sans he was talking to was a cardboard cutout and that the narrator in his head was truly crazy. Was that close enough? It wasn't very close. The reason they paid that guy to be the voice actor is because he's good at doing the voice. They didn't pay me anything to, to not voice act it. So, but thanks a lot for the $10, very generous. He was talking to a cardboard cutout. That was, that was, uh, yeah, $10. <laughs> uh, um, what, what is that called? Cameo? What, what's the service you get the voice actors through? I'm basically Gianni Magis Magistrano. What's his name? Basically him now. Same guy. Oh shit, chat was given 50 bucks for not voice acting in Stanley Parable. They missed me. Yes, Gabriel Ultrakill, that's who I was referring to. That's his name. <laughs> yes, discard all your weapons. That is definitely the way. Sounds like, oh yeah, makes sense. Seems legit. Would Sans say, I feel you? That's a bit weird. Um, Wolfsud cannot interact or donate as they are working. Tragic. I get you, that's better. Yeah, I get you. Their sense is just like, yep, that's the most relatable thing in the world. Oh, uh, yeah, I get you. The hinges on those things are deadly. So it also cannot hear me because the construction equipment is going. Are you working on the construction site? That's impressive. Uh, if you're managing to text while also driving a cement mixer. That's just the picture I have in my head right now. You're operating like a 400 foot tall crane. Just like texting on your phone. <laughs> Um, I feel I, I may be relying a little bit too much on the awkward silence to mark, mark the passage of time, but uh, quick and dirty is what gets the fic moving along, so there we have it.
Yeah, they're sitting on a steel beam 500 feet in the air like those uh, steel worker photos from the 1920s or whatever. The guy's eating lunch on, a, on an eye beam sticking off a skyscraper. When the furry gay orgy asks Chan, um, again, you are all free, it's your right as human beings to make fan fan fiction if you want. You can you can do whatever you want if, if you make your own uh, electron trucking alternate universe. But um, but some things go a little bit beyond, um, I think, the, the bounds of what I had planned for this stream. Will do, stay tuned. All right. You, more power to you, buddy. Nerdly appearance one. Maybe. So, uh, I guess I'll be real with you here. Since it's just the two of us and you seem like a good guy and all. Making fan fiction of fan fiction is something not new to the Undertale Deltarune Phantom. <laughs> That's the understatement of the year. <laughs> Thank you for that, Foppy Poof. Asgo replied warily. I don't really care about winning this election. I don't really care about winning this election. Lori's clearly got her own ideas about about it, and I don't want to make her happy. I really do. But we both know I'm not cut out for politics. I think the Sans voice is just getting worse. I'm, I'm not sure what's happened there. Hopefully it comes back eventually. Sans just say no. Like how I do to nerdly. <laughs> hey everybody, this is a critical here. Maybe I've had to go for critical. I'll hit Sans. It's basically the same voice. <laughs> oh, I'm not cut out for politics. Good one, chat. This is accidentally a pun. Perfect.
Accidental pun, let's go, yeah. Don't get the joke. It's a cardboard cutout. Who's cutout for politics? Well, you seem to have a real head on your shoulders. This is sort of retreading the ground of just what Sand says to Frisk. I realized I've, e even in the original dialogue, I've just gone back to accidentally quoting Undertale. Fuck, this is the curse of fanfiction. To be fair, you need a very high IQ to understand the humor presented in Electron Token. Yes. Decide to up and run. That seems like a thing someone would say. I'm not sure exactly what it adds to the sentence. It just feels right. It's the curse of characters who are consistent, uh, act in consistent ways under similar circumstances. Yes. And also the curse of, because of that, you want to put them into similar circumstances subconsciously so that you can rely on the previous text. But if you've got your reasons, I wish you luck. <laughs> I'm gonna bust up the skeleton now, he can't stop me. Not at my shop. As for me, I've got a shift today. I'm just gonna let my bro use my slot to promote my new album. To promote his new album. <laughs> That's... No, Irina, not Papyrus. <laughs> it's not Papyrus, Irina. I kind of just want Gaster to be a SoundCloud rapper. That's the joke. I hope you all like it. 
You may have missed some context. Not really. It's We're heading toward the reveal that Sans is just letting Gaster be his campaign manager, not because he wants to win the election, but because Gaster's a SoundCloud rapper and wants to promote his new mixtape. Or whatever. Where's Mooks when you need him? Yeah. I <laughs> this is stupid. I love it. Rapping. So I guess I'll need your help, chat, to come up with Gaster rap lyrics. I'm just, of course, picturing that one stupid gif where he's doing, like, gang signs. It's like a, a Mershu animated Gaster. Who's rapping with like a. a, -e -a, -a -o -o, a, -e -a -o. The music is just the same piano melody with some garage <laughs> band drums. Yeah, it's all. It's like the, um, the Ghostbusters Great Value album, but it's all just like Gaster's theme remixes as the backing track. I do it in Wingdings. Here's the thing, I don't think Google Docs supports wingdings at all. I'm not sure I can actually do that. Um, again, if I do a final pass for this uh, and translate it into a, like, a, like a published version, I can make them actually wingdings. That may actually make it impossible to read though. Um, I can kind of read wingdings, but extremely slowly, and so it would be a pain in the ass even for me. Um, I wonder if they have Aster. That would be the closest thing. I, I don't see any Aster, unfortunately. I can use some other font for Gaster. More fonts? There are more fonts, but not Aster. And not Wingding. So that's too bad. We can choose one, a custom font for Gaster. Which one looks the most like Wingdings? Gaster is going to be included, yes, for the uh, chat who just got here. Chat number. Or frick it, I can just use Courier New. You can't stop me. Lobster? The, the weird handwritten one? That sounds kind of horrible, actually, yeah. Something horribly boring. Sure, your news pretty boring. Gaster for mayor, says chat. Yeah. W to the D to the G. W to the... God, even that's hard to say. L to the L to the Northern Lion. Northern Lion coming at you from largely the West if you want to get technical about it. Shoutouts to the best fan song ever made. Reroll my run. Uh, the, the door clunked shut. Um, I wish I could say if there was a way to say a ketchup leaking cutout of sands, but you can't really use that as an adjective. Ketchup leaking. It's too clunky. It doesn't work at all.
Oh, Mooks is here. There we go. <laughs> Five dollars for Mooks. Thank you. Uh, Lingo Jam has a Wingdings translator you can put uh, text into it and it'll translate into the HTML symbols for Wingdings. Interesting. I'll look into that. But uh, again, that's for the final published version. Uh, for the Google Doc, we want to just be able to read the text. We have to side with practicality here. Uh, and, but thank you for the $5. Um, I kind of just want to say weird, uncanny, bizarre. It seems redundant, though. Uh, there's a funnier way to say this, though, like a sans homunculus. There we go. The door clunked shut, leaving Asgore with his thoughts, uh, alone with his thoughts, alone with his thoughts, and a cardboard sand homunculus that was gradually leaking ketchup. The ketchup coming out of the cardboard is a reference to him having blood. Uh, sure. Sure, you can say that. Serious, deli delirious darkness, do be mysterious, turtlenecks and bottlenecks appearing out like parsecs. I love it. I'm copy pasting that remnant. That's exactly how Sans uh, or Gaster should rap. I'm just gonna put that down here. Um, I I've had a lot of fun. Uh, there was a buddy I have um, with, um, we, we did our program together, um, the half music, half computer science program. He was much more into music production than I was, but uh, I would meet up with him and another buddy um, a few times and we, we got really drunk and tried to make as many like shitty SoundCloud rap songs as we could in one night. Um, it, it, it's some of the most fun I've ever had, honestly. I, extremely entertaining. Um, got some good lyrics out of that, too. I don't think any of them ever got published, though, tragically. They were, they were kind of bangers, though. Should see if I can dig them up. Uh, $2 from Algie Satchel. Doesn't Gaster talk like... Uh, how do I... Er, where do you... What? I, I can't pronounce that string of characters. <laughs> I'm not sure it's supposed to convey, unfortunately. You just mean like... Um, yeah, why are you putting lowercase wingdings into chat? Did people not know in, in in current year that Gaster speaks exclusively in uppercase wingdings? You think that I bothered to learn the lowercase homestuck ass looking wingdings? Hold on. <laughs> when do we name Gaster's album? Feel free. The, the, the time is now. Uh, I think we should just skip forward after the crowd's filed in and they're having their actual conversation. Looking for some things very, very interesting. Dark, darker, yet darker. A market with a marker. <laughs> the number of syllables is so inconsistent. That's good. L let's just compile lyrics down here. The album would be called uh, Darker Yet Hotter. <laughs> Straight out of hometown. <laughs> Symphony number 17. That's not bad. Lil G. Oh yeah, how does his name get incorporated into like a SoundCloud rapper name? Like WD... It's like Dr. Dre, but do like his name isn't actually Dr. Gaster. It's just his like... His rapper title. 
Gastard album is just Buck Bumble theme. Oh, that's fucking funny, actually, LG Satchel. Two dollars, thank you. But, uh, the, the, the bippity buck bumble. Bump to the bump to the bump to the bass. Bippity buck bumble. I love that. Uh, maybe you, we can collab with JD to get, like, a Gaster's, uh, album. I'll leave that as a standing offer, uh, if, if, if JD makes a, a Buck Bumble Gaster backtrack, uh, I'll rap over it. I'm just gonna say that so I can regret it later. That's what I like to do. That's how I live my life. Gaster's rapper name would just be WDG. That's got, that's got some style to it. JD fucking loves Buck Bumble so much. Bum to the bum to the bum to the base. BPD Buck Bumble. Okay, chat likes WDG a lot. It, it does have a ring to it. The G stands for gangster or something. Dr. Wingding's gangster? <laughs> Uh, another two dollars for Mooks. In the Green Sands fan game, it's G Money. Oh, that's that's good too, actually. Maybe he just has two names. He just has like as many names as we want. WDG, aka G Money. <laughs> Doctor G Money. The G. Mystery Man. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna record these. Uh... Him. Oh, but stylized. Is the four not cool? The four is leet speak, right? We're going for... Rapper speak, or something. Oh, the album title is Him. I like that. Why is that Comic Sans now? What happened? Whatever. Uh, we have to decide what Him stands for, but that can be later. <laughs> okay, I think we should skip ahead a bit, yeah, and start the conference here. Oh, dub G. <laughs> That's good, actually. <laughs> there was someone, my, my, one of my brother's friends years ago was just called Dub. And I think that's all, all it took was his name started with W, and he just became Dub. It was the most baffling nickname I've ever heard of, but it works in this context. Notorious WDG. <laughs> Oh, him stands for Holland and money? <laughs> him more like random access mayhem. Spell it like Young Venus because it's cool. My PhD won't deter me. No. Okay. Uh, these are good. These are good. We have the next great bit on our hands here with Gaster rap lyrics. Gaster having a constantly changing rapper name could be a reference to how he's scattered across space and time. <laughs> I, I I wrote chutzpah in Hebrew. Yeah, someone in chat just gave me the actual spelling, so I was like, why not? Uh, okay, we have to get a uh, holiday back into this So well, okay, here's the scene we have mayor holiday uh, a cardboard cutout of sands you can only say undertale lines uh, And Asgore and at some point during the scene uh, Gaster's going to come in as his sans special guest 
but he's actually just going to like dance on the table and promote his album. So that's what we have to work with here. Oh, Undyne. Oh, yeah. Yeah, last stream chat is saying uh, we decided that Undyne would swap sides to Asgore during this debate. The so last we saw of Undyne, she was running after Spamton, but off screen, Spamton has somehow inexplicably radicalized Undyne and, and won her over to Asgore's side. I like that. Will Spamton appear? Uh, I think we want to keep Spamton out of the picture just for now. Spamton tends to dominate the scenes. Gaster should reference Dess's death via opium overdose. That, that's, that could be a plot point. Do we want Gaster to say that though? Oh yeah, right. Spamton promises Undyne an anti-opium police state. <laughs> Yeah. I'm no goner, I'm the owner. Getting laid while you look over? <laughs> Gaston's just talking about how he's getting laid. Alright. This is the status quo now. Gaster fucks. That also implies that he pronounces goner as goner. I'm no goner, I'm the owner. <laughs> Gaster only fucks men, says chat. If you say so. It's WD Gaster with me, your bitch. Oh, I see. Yeah, he censors his own songs. Let, let's keep the lyrics. We don't want the lyrics too explicit. We want to get be, be tasteful, okay? WD Gaster would never be crass. Okay, we have to get this next scene cracked here. Um... We need like an establishing shot, <laughs> but, but for writing, or should we just go into like holiday giving a speech or, uh, huh? I haven't thought about this. Mayor Holiday is officiating the debate? No, she is just like part of the debate. We, we don't really have a mediator here. Oh, didn't I say way earlier that Toby Fox would just inexplicably be the mediator of the debate and it would never be acknowledged? I think I'm just gonna go with that. It's just Toby Fox is here. Everyone knows who he is. He's been there the whole time. The dog? No, like, human. Just like, just Toby Fox, like, standing there. He's just standing there. The dog is a separate entity. That's so weird, says Remnant. Yes, it's extremely weird. <laughs> this is now a real, real person fanfic. I've heard that's bad, but I'm sure Toby will forgive us. As long as he doesn't do anything. Make him have a werewolf transformation into the dog, like in that one really weird interview? <laughs> Maybe as a passing reference. Um... Okay, uh, the debate. We could get stuck here. Um, I feel like we should have Holiday. We, we should go back into the scene with Holiday. 
uh, but we haven't really addressed, we haven't seen from Holiday's perspective yet to like see what her approach is. Her platform so far has just been <laughs> promising to fix traffic bylaws mostly. Um, okay, may, th I think the best way to do this would be, um, would be Holiday talking about something really, like, mundane and mayoral. Something kind of, like, real ass about, like, I don't know, uh, wage bylaws or god knows what. Um, and then we demonstrate th that Asgore can just completely dominate the conversation by mentioning, uh, the opium crisis now. So he's, like, turned, turned that against her. And is now just like completely derailing all the conversation to drug war, because Spamton told him to do that. Can Kalloween shapeshift? No, she just has an indescribable form. This scene would work best in Holiday's POV. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, holiday POV. Is Halloween Halloween yet with a K? Uh, hasn't been yet, but we can in include just one reference to that. Uh, Two dollars from Algie Satchel. Today, as mediator, we have the literal god. Yes. Uh, except that it's it's only funny if none of them acknowledge it. Like Toby is just like Newbert. He just appears, and everyone's like, "Yeah, it's Toby Fox," and there's literally no explanation. Opium got me to the core of these boring rappers. All hail your new master, Gaster. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna. I mean, anytime I see a line, I'm just gonna add it. Um. So, so the problem with holiday discussing uh, dry political things is that I have no idea what the fuck those are or how they would be discussed. Um. It, it's a. It's an issue with writing what you know. <laughs> Because I don't know. Uh, taxes. Taxes are good. It's Outsin's time to shine. Yes, Outsin, please. Deliver some... Something that politicians talk about. That's really fucking boring. Welfare. Road repair. Uh, land value tax. Oh, that's good. Um, I'm guessing Holiday would have a vested interest in, in keeping that low because she owns the biggest property in town. Oh, wait, we, we mentioned fracking before, right? <laughs> fracking is really funny. <laughs> Zoning laws. Land value tax makes sense because it would apply to Asgore as well. Okay, I, I think fracking is actually better. Because it doesn't make any sense in context, but it's it's just like really hot button. And it, it, it implies that everyone in hometown who's not employed in town commutes to like an oil field that's just like off screen somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah okay, so Mayor Holiday is campaigning to allow fracking below residential areas. <laughs> I think I like this. Uh, she talks about boosting the town economy by allowing tax breaks for businesses to come in. Okay, um, can the businesses be fracking as well, or is that a separate idea? So tax breaks for new businesses. We're assembling a platform for holiday here. L let me add this to the notes section. Not in Comic Sans. Um, and, uh, not below her house. 
The, the fracking creates dark fountains. Oh my god, that's that's such a weird tie-in. Uh, infrastructure. Onion-san is pissed about- Oh, that that's actually a good bit. CJD's salvaged it with a bit. It's just Onion-san taking up like half the room and complaining about fracking to Mayor Holiday. Maybe, maybe that's the direction we take it. I like that so much, JD. Uh, maybe she's just talking some shit about how the benefits of fracking will eventually trickle down to the the sea denizens. It's it's trickle down economics. Uh, how the fuck to approach this scene though? Jesus. She means the oil will literally trickle down into the sea. Nerdly is Halloween's campaign manager. You know what? Fine. Fine. I'm not sure when that'll come into play, but fine. She'll talk about how sea denizens don't contribute to the economy. <laughs> That's really fucking funny. All right. Um, what's the moment of the conversation we enter in on, though? It has to be like the crowd is like murmuring in response to someone's last statement, and then Holiday responds. Um, yeah, just move. J just sell your house to Aquaman. <laughs> Holiday's internal monologue. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, okay, okay, let me think. This is going to be a bit hard to write here. Because uh, I have to get into Holiday's headspace. We haven't done that yet. Because she's taken this seriously. And no one else really is. Undyne is a water citizen too. That's, uh, well she doesn't live in the water. She just happens to look like a fish. Uh, five bucks from Algy Satchel to say, As we all know, we are an oil state, and when Chris becomes mad and stabbed the floor yelling, I hate the floor, when we found lots of oil under there. <laughs> the, uh, this is funny, the, the fucking, the, the gas leak crack theory is just about how hometown has ridiculous oil reserves that are four centimeters below the ground. I, that There's a joke in there somewhere, we just have to find it. We have to find out where, where that joke is. Yeah, she's taking things in. I, I, I'm with you there, Remnant. Okay. So maybe we demonstrate on the fracking issue. The the crowd is initially on onion. Let's make a little arc here. The crowd is initially on Onion San's side, because he's making his appeal to uh, you know, I'm going to have to be evicted from my home. And then and then Halloween turns that around by, <laughs> as Chat said, um, diminishing or uh, drawing drawing under. Uh, fire uh, Onion San's role in society and contribution to the economy of hometown, and then that wins the crowd over. <laughs> and then Spamton, uh, or not Spamton, uh, Asgore eventually derails all of this.
Um, they didn't have pul pulpits previously, but now she's she's spontaneously generated the pulpit. Tax credits. We are providing tax incentives to any and all sea monsters that move out. Perfect line. You, you've got it. Tax credits. Um, you missed the beginning of the stream. Why are we brainstorming for Gaster's rap alias at the bottom? Oh, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see. Uh, is that more Gaster rap? All these menial immaterial tasks got me rapping through masks. Beware the man who beats in hands. I'm always in the top five for the rave dive. Good enough. It's going in. The best rap lyrics are where you can't really tell what they're supposed to mean. Uh, right, tax. Tax credits. Tax credits. to phrase any of this. Another five bucks from Algae Satchel. We need to destroy the library. There's tons of oil under there. Destroying the library for oil. I'm not sure about that. Um, we, we've we already gone in the direction of seabed fracking. That's It's not currently on the table, unfortunately. The, um, the, the fracking thing, the fracking thing is amusing. It, it's kind of a, a ridiculous point, but um, we we have to ultimately save the really extremist policy for Asgore. Um, so having to relocate people because of uh, fracking operations, it's it's like comically evil, but it's not completely unrealistic. Whereas, um, I don't know, building a fucking a wall around hometown <laughs> to keep out opium dealers. <laughs> That is, uh, comical, and, uh, Asgore-like, I think. With hometowns, uh, yes, as predicted, seabed fracking remained, uh, the seabed fracking issue remained a sticking point with hometowns aquatic demographic. Fortunately, also as predicted, Hometown's aquatic demographic still consisted entirely of onion sun. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're not giving Asgore a MAGA hat. That's, well, it, not that any of this isn't on the nose, but that's just uncreatively on the nose. <laughs> Two dollars from Irving the Fourth. All money in Calabine brings in will be lost to opium. Why is that one word? Is that a reference to something I don't get?
Uh, hmm. I'm not sure what that means actually, but thank you nonetheless for two dollars. It's inside the nose. They're blue instead of red. No, Asgard's hats would be pink and flowery. Um, ears feels... There we go. Keep the bit going. <laughs> One single ear. Oh, character limit. Something Asgore could say. Oh, you meant that seriously. I thought you were just making some weird reference. Um, yeah, all of the, the money Calabine brings in will be lost to opium. Yeah, that, I, I kind of like that, yeah. It doesn't need to necessarily make sense or be true. It's just something that I'll say. That's good. I didn't say that nerdly campaign manager would be part of the scene or immediately. I said that it's canonically true that nerdly is her campaign manager. If we have use for that later, then we'll have nerdly in the fic. Um, okay, we, we need dialogue here. fracking regulations are loosened, my platform will of course provide tax credits to any aquatic residents whose property values are affected. Close enough? This isn't exactly going to be a house of cards here, but it's it, it it's got to get the job done. Is it strange I'm actually invested in the plot? How far will Asgore go to win? Will Sans ever drop out of the race? How long will Spamton's nose get? Please answer. Hell yeah, I'm glad you're feeling it, dude. We're, we're trying to crank up the laser blood index on this sucker. Refundable tax credits, there we go. Whatever that means. Um, I kind of forget how Onion-san speaks. Did the stream die? Uh, I don't think so. If anyone else says the stream's dead, then I'll... Oh, it's good, okay. You hear? Yeah? Uh, I'm Onion Son, you hear? It's my big favorite! Yeah, okay, it's, it's coming back to me. Um, th does he speak in all caps? Or is it like... Oh, that was Carl Weezer? I wasn't even trying. Yeah, Carl Weezer. Yeah, it's kind of Carl Weezer, you're right. I'm really feeling it, Shulk reading Sans Ictorial Sansic. D does Shulk say I'm really feeling it? I, th I thought that was a Rex thing. I've only seen uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I'm really feeling it. Hoira, Mithra, I'm really feeling it. Jimmy's mom? I don't know what that's in reference to. I, I'm gone far too, too far down the rabbit hole. I'm really feeling it's definitely Shulk. 
Oh, uh, no, who says that? Is that Nia? W one of the... Part of the uh, the polyethnic um, Xenoblade Chronicles ear rape combat dialogue is, is definitely someone saying, I'm really feeling it. I'm getting fired up. It's a Jimmy Neutron thing. Well, I, yeah, I got that. That's a smash taunt. The more you know. Um, I, I, I somehow remember Onion Sun speaking in all caps. I'm not sure that's true. I'll see how it looks. Uh, Onion Sun does not speak in all caps. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's enough. My, my home is more than property values, you hear? Long words. Good enough. Mentioned that his body takes up half the auditorium. I, I, I shouted that out. The back three rows of seats that Onion Sun is occupying. The song from the sea is uh, property invasion and disturbing the peace. No, it's just fracking. The song from the sea is the uh, the oil rigs. Miss Calloway, you're a douche, you hear? <laughs> Oops, I did the... The experimental gender neutral miss that wasn't intentional. Miss Calloween, you're a you're a big meanie, you hear? Five bucks from Doc Breeb, thank you. Beware the campaign manager that speaks in hands. Check arts and crafts. Um I guess we could do a quick intermission for actually no, I don't want to break up the moment momentum here. We'll look at that in a sec. This is so Bojack Horseman, maybe. I have to admit, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm subconsciously drawing on the, um, what are your opinions on the Israeli-Palestine conflict scene from Bojack Horseman continuously. You've got me there. Miss Halloween, you take... <laughs> if you take my home, I take your fucking children, you hear? <laughs> that's... that's funny. I'm not sure it's... I can actually put that in, though. Uh, also, um, as far as we know, she only has one child, so... Not really accurate. I mean, it's not eight deaths. Here's where we use the Calvin with the K just once and never again. Oh, it for some reason it automatically corrects to the Halloween if you use the K, but with a C it doesn't. Who knows?
<laughs> Mr. San. That that's gonna be his name now. K is closer to H than C? Only a little bit. I don't know. Mrs. Halloween, if you frack my water, I'll kill you and kill you again. That's my best Alfred Coleman. It was not very good. Onion San's a guy? Does Onion San have specified gender? I have no idea, honestly. I, I think I've been thinking in terms of like San as like the Japanese honorific. Which, does that only refer to guys? Or not? I don't know. It is gender neutral. Does Onion San not have any specified gender? Really? Oh, okay. We're, we're retconning Onion San's gender. Do I ever. Uh, <laughs> I can intentionally use M. How is that pronounced? Is it Mixter? <laughs> how do you actually say that out loud? It is Mix. All right, let's let's deploy the pronoun. All right. Big meanie I may be, Mr. San, but I'm a big meanie who understands that this town needs economic stimulus, and it needs it fast. And allowing tax breaks for undersea fracking is, at this point in time, the single most promising avenue for accomplishing that. Another five dollars from Algae Satchel, thank you. After the debate, Asgore sees his truck smash into a wall and Spamton jumps through the window. Holy fuck! Am I late, Asgore? I'm out of stamina bar. Sure, we'll do that. that, that that's like a good epilogue to the scene. I like that. I pronounced mix. I thought you said it was mixter. Or is it not mister? It's, oh, it's just mix. Oh yeah, I guess miss doesn't use ter. I was thinking they both had the suffix ter for some reason. Mix. It's just mix. Understood.
Um, Onion San chains himself to the home in protest. <laughs> I, I don't think this is going to become a whole subplot, guys. The gas to rap should slowly degrade in rhyme quality until it's utter nonsense. That's good. Onion San has a home? Yeah, it's a, a, like a full McMansion, just underwater. I'm the sound from the clouds, setting skeleton of trends. Hear the clapping in the crowd, all the people speak in hand. <laughs> it doesn't rhyme at all. <laughs> That's good. That's going in. Holiday says she'll frack her house herself. <laughs> she'll frack your mom if you're not careful. Wait, isn't... Is is this a Bojack Horseman thing? Wait, th there was a fucking episode of Bojack Horseman where Bojack ends up, like, putting an oil drill into his own house and it falls into a sinkhole, right? That happened, right? Oh, no, that was Mr. Peanut Butter. Is this, is this literally a Bojack Horseman plot point that I'd forgotten about? Oh, you said fracking in reference to Bojack. Well, that's fine. We can steal from Bojack. Um, what's his face? Bob Raphael Ambrosius Waxberg isn't gonna come and sue me. <laughs> Mr. Peanut Butter fracks his own house. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we don't need to retread that exact plot point, but uh, I, I didn't actually realize that's where this was coming from until now. Depending on who hometown elects, your mom either gets fracked, befriended, or creamered. No! Um, you love coming back to the stream after a break and piecing together what's going on? That must be a, a great joy. The library got to go Harby. These rhyming mimes of mine. What? The utter garbage. <laughs> That's it. It's the worst fucking line of all time. I love it. The, the library got to Harby. These rhyming mimes of mine. I don't even know what it's trying to say. Uh, wait, what would be good for the chorus? Game player. Yeah, I'm the man, he's the man. I'm the mystery man, mystery man. And I'm the top chop bop that talks with his hands. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Hauling in money, <laughs> yeah. All right, you ready for this chat? I am actually going to include a nerdly cameo. I hope you all appreciate it. Flick upward. Okay. 
I'm in present tense again. Fuck. Junior campaign staffer. Ah, yes. I like that better. Um, not not a VR headset. I'm picturing. Here's what I'm picturing here. The the specific. The, if anyone knows Amon Animations, the the one where uh, it, it's it's the um, an animation of the interview between uh, Stephen Crowder and uh, Ethan Klein, and and the camera pans over and it's um, the Resident Evil dude sitting there dressed like a spec ops fighter. Uh, and he's just like typing into this like full wall of like radio comms. Th that's what Birdly's doing here, or nerdly, I mean. You love this reference because somehow I get it. <laughs> Wonderful. So the the picture is like nerdly is somehow just like monitoring a bunch of like statistics that somehow like her real time approval rating like rises somehow from this. Uh wearing full okay. Ah, uh, shit. Her eyes flick upward and lock with those of her junior campaign staffer, Nerdly, who is seated deep in shadow in the back row, wearing full radio comms gear and stealthily typing into a laptop. He nods once. She nailed it. No, I think we've confirmed that Holiday has more than one eye. Another five bucks from Algie Satchel. Thank you once again. There's all these terrible rap lyrics slowly turning into noise uh, in the background, but there's no buck bumble and the bump to the bass buck playing. That's true. It's When you get to that, we can actually play buck bumble maybe. One of her eyes. That's better. Oh, it's in. There we go. I didn't convert the rest to past tense. Well, not stealthily. <laughs> Let's just... He has a mechanical keyboard. It sounds like... Actually, noise suppression probably blocked that. No, one of her eyes implies that she has independent control over both like a chameleon, that's better. Like, like Nerdly is looking at the screen of like Metaton's ratings, that's just like this flailing graph that takes up this whole monitor. And it's just like, election winning meter. 
this may or may not be the only time Nerdly is mentioned in the fic. We'll see. Uh, wait, I, I forgot to put the trickle down buzzword in. I wanted that. use economic yeah one of her light sensing ocular orbs says algae had to a two dollars too clunky it's let's let's just keep it one of her eyes perfect elegant uh, i'm gonna stick with that but thank you Nerdly gives her the single to remind her to say trickle down. Oh, <laughs> that's really funny. Like like a baseball hand signal. She'd forgotten talking point six. I am confident she picked back up without any noticeable pause that the benefits will trickle down to everyone in time. That. Let's break it up. Perfect. The uh, great writing, thank you, thank you. Very good, very good, perfect. I'm going back to in time, I like that better. That in time, the benefits. Except it's not Asgore speaking. Thunderous applause. This could be a whole novel. That's the way it's going. Andrew, can I convince you to include a scene where Asgore is walking past QCs and overhears a teenager screaming about the American dream, <laughs> thinking about how the youth turned to politics? That's, that's good. I think you can convince me of that. <laughs> <laughs> that was that that's actually what Birdly and Susie are doing. We know exactly what Birdly and Susie are doing in this canon. There we go.
Uh, but now Asgore has to derail it by making some nonsensical point about opium. <laughs> Uh, how to how to get into that? Thunderous applause. Uh, give me liberty or death, you hear? Onion sounds. <laughs> Yeah, Holiday accuses him of changing the subject. Um, yeah, Asgore, Asgore should just be treating this like a WWE promo. He's like, y you're afraid of me changing the subject because this is the topic you're hiding from, Holiday. This fic is connected to both Jaruvers and Umris now. Well, naturally. One thing is that uh, the thic of it is really good show. Uh, that's that's the show that Outsin likes, is how a politician character will just get into complete nonsense, feel good, we should all work together speeches. <laughs> I guess I was going in the right direction with Asgore's first stab at it then. It's like, we should all be nice to each other. Um, Two dollars from Irving to say remember. Uh, I don't. Shit, did I agree to something then forgot about it? Remind me, Irving. Uh, and then immediately another $5 from Autumn Wolverton. Thank you for that. Asgore has flashcards from Spamton and has to struggle through saying Hochi Mama with a straight face. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I, I like that, actually. Uh, it's so hard to tell where the cursor is. I'll crucify your campaign manager, you hear? Yeah, yeah, not quite. I'm the master of sound, you disaster on the ground. If you mess with my clout, get ready to get blasted with my gaster blaster, you fucking snout. It's, that, yeah, that's good, that's good. I'll take it. Spamton's in the scene without completely derailing it. Yeah, he's there in spirit. Hoochie Grandma. Um, Irving has not replied after saying remember. So I'm stuck with just having forgotten currently. I am looking out for a message though. Don't forget, remember to rem remember. Shoutouts to the Tunic soundtrack. Q&A so far had been textbook. She allowed herself a half-smile, hidden carefully behind a forelimb. Now, now Asgore has to cut in here. Oh, Asgore says Halloween's fracking, money will be lost to opium. Yes, I did remember that. I did remember. I just didn't know that's what you were referring to.
And then from the left, a deep fatherly voice. Do any of you actually believe that? Yeah. Reminder, Sans is still here. <laughs> He's just staying quiet for now. Oh, come on. Murmurings? That's not a real word. Murmurings isn't a word according to Google. Uh, $10 from Algie Satchel. Thank you. Uh, what if there's a whole side story happening in the background where a new competitor to QC's diner that gets super popular until QC throws Molotov cocktails at the buildings and merges it to the ground. The thing is, the thing is, the thing is, we're talking about extending the, the fic with subplots here. Even without trying to, even trying to keep this focused, this is already like extremely long. This is like several streams long. Um, and for just for practical reasons like I, I do want to absorb like weird ideas and go on tangents here but incorporating a completely separate side plot that will just take up scenes I don't think we can justify it we have to keep this moving along for the sake of this whole operation yeah sorry about that QC damaging Asgore's truck was already a plot point yeah, but that was part of uh, introducing Spamton. That was a, it wasn't a plot point. It was just sort of something that happens while something else was happening. Murmurings like that? Oh. That works, thank you. Uh, we could do a cool simile here, but I can't think of any cool similes, so that's too bad. More gastro lyrics saying, uh, Kids stay determined and hold on to your soul. Lava in Hotland got so hot because of my fall. <laughs> that's really bad. Just insert it as the Stanley. Meanwhile, someone threw a Molotov cocktail that burned down a building to avoid derailing us into too many subplots. No one in the election campaign seemed to mind. Or something like that. That'll work. Uh, he- okay, the crowd's murmuring fizzled and- fizzled and died. All eyes turned to Asgore. He returned their gazes with a steely look of his own. This was nothing like the Asgore of yesterday's debate.
we, we have a bait and switch here, I think. Where it seems like Asgore is going to play like the um the the human appeal card and and like empathize with Onion San, but he actually just goes talking into his uh his opium uh agenda. Economic stimulus this. Stimulate this punches Halloween. <laughs> Trickle down these nuts. I got two cracks in my face bone. If you want to know how I got them, it's because I fell in my face. That's not even remotely like a rhyme. I can't include that in good conscience. Please? Okay, fine. Um, is weaponry allowed in this election battle? <laughs> I don't know. Guys, this isn't a shitpost fic. This is a dark comedy like Breaking Bad. <laughs> this is, yeah, exactly. That's all pitch it to the investors. I'm just going to improvise some, like, anti-intellectualist rhetoric. This, this pivots into opium ranting, but for now, it's going to look good. <laughs> to prove that words are useless, I will not speak for the remainder of this debate. <laughs> Fuck, that's funny. I'm not sure I can use it, but it's really funny. Uh, another five bucks from Algae Satchel. Wow, thank you. Um, I'm the man behind the tree turning eggs into gold. Now that's how I roll till they all sold. Perfect. That's going in. Thank you. <laughs> a community of people is redundant and funny yes There we go. Economic stimulus, this trickle down that. 
Fancy words, but what use does this community have for words? Hometown is not a collection of charts and property values to be optimized. It's a community of people, and it is for those people that I intend to speak. Asgore voice sucks now. Gastorap has more progress in the scene. Yeah. It do. We're getting there, though. Unless the people in question enjoy doing OPM. Well, yeah, but, you know, in theory. I'm not mid, I'm a kid of biting off my tongue. It's too, it's too hot from the tracks, I'm spitting, they fire. Ow! Fuck, that sucks. That sucks so bad. Ow. Irina says things are going well. I'm, I'm so glad. Silence. The crowd is wrapped. His, as Gorlean's closer to his mic. Um. I have heard the... Uh, too redundant. No, that, that's fine. I've heard the people of this town. I have heard the people of this town, Mayor Holiday, and it is not fracking they demand. It's a war on drugs. This town needs is a war on drugs. <laughs> no wait, he should glance the onion sign to further set up the, um, the the bait and switch. It's the war on drugs. Okay. Uh, $2 from Chet Dinkle. Add car crash. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I actually had, um, as a, as a future thing in mind that Spamton could... Uh, no, that was, um, was that last stream? People were talking about Spamton hitting someone with the car. I think that's in the cards, yeah. Ascor starts the D.A.R.E. program. I'm not totally sure what that is, but it's more like militarize the police kind of program. I'm not sure that's what D.A.R.E. was about. Joseph Goebbels reference. Spicy. 
Did I reference someone? Outson? That wasn't intentional if I referenced someone. Especially not if their name was uh, Joseph Goebbels. DARE uh, program is an anti-gun program that went around schools telling kids not to do drugs. You mean anti-drug program? Yeah. I'm a lion, I'm a panther. Call me Gaster, call me Faster. I'm a cheetah, not a cheetah. Adultery sucks. <laughs> Fucking hell, that, that the last two words hit like a ton of bricks. Holy shit. So he's like a, just a, instantly, suddenly Christian. Adultery sucks. And then he falls off the table and breaks his arm. All right. Adultery sucks. <laughs> Don't include the yo, it hits so much harder. I agree. Adultery sucks. Maybe Undyne could say that. Uh, what, what is Undyne saying? Oh no, oh, Undyne appears and says this town needs a war on drugs. That, that's the dramatic reveal of Undyne. I think that's what you mean, isn't it? No, it's not. Oh. Okay, what does Undyne say? Oh, it's in. Do you want total war? I'm not sure what the context of the reference is, though. I, I doubt how um, adeptly I could wield that quote. Five dollars from Algy Satchel to say, We are going to Myanmar and Afghanistan, baby. Get our M16s, we're destroying all opioids, we're on drugs. Uh, that's kind of the idea, yeah. Not in those terms, but... That's definitely the sentiment. Thank you for that. <laughs> In order to stop opium, I just need to kill six human children. <laughs> Trust me, it's necessary. We'll get there, maybe. I hope we can get there. I don't think we quite want the barrier yet. I think that, um... Okay, how about this? Uh, how about this? What if... What if we use the Spamton's car crash as a plot point? To, like, Spamton accidentally kills a man by driving his, his truck. Uh, and then they have to, like, cover it up and frame it as if it was the work of, like, some fictitious human opium cartel. And then use that as leverage to then wall off the town or something. Chone says, We're joining the war on autism. On the side of autism. Beautiful. Uh, the Froggit Mafia. Oh, that still has to come back, doesn't it? Oh, God. Yeah. Chris has to get involved. Oh, my God. We have to... We just have to keep going here. The first group you can think of as humans? I think Spamton can propose that. Oh, Go Goebbels was a Nazi propaganda minister who gave a deranged speech about do you want total war? <laughs> Tempting. <laughs> Tempting. I guess the crowd has to shout back yes.
At first, nothing. The crowd seemed too dumbfounded to generate so much as an embarrassed cough. A smattering of claps. By the way, chat, yeah, you should all join my um, fictitious campaign to make clapter a valid English word. That just means the same thing as applause. Because I feel strongly and for no particular reason that clapter should be a word that you can use. It just it just seems like that's what it should mean. The phrase totalen Krieg is now a bit of a meme in Germany because of the total war thing. Good to know. <laughs> Clap like like this. Clapter. It it means the same thing as applause. Clearly you can see that it would mean the same thing as applause, right? Like the roar of clapter filled the stadium. The more you say it, the more natural it sounds really. Yeah, it's like laughter but for clapping, exactly. Fuck it, I'm just gonna use it. That, that's how Shakespeare did it. He just used the words and people started using them. If you just tell Google not to flag it as a typo, people will believe that it's a real word. Two T's? Nah. Laughter doesn't have two T's. Fence clapter. Halloween glittered at nerdly. He looked to be engaged in an all-out wrestling match with his laptop. He, he does like the throat cutting gesture. Is laptop. Oh. There we go. Thank you. Hey, Andrew, what do you? I don't know. I missed a super chat. Oh, I did. Sorry, Algy Satchel. Two dollars from Algy Satchel. Froggett pulled out a pistol to assassinate Asgore. That's later. That's when Holiday hires assassins. We'll get there. I'm going to go back and see that Asgore also checks his cue cards before delivering the war on drugs line.
Uh, Mayor Holiday hires Burger Pants to assassinate Asgore. We we can work this into a whole like Pulp Fiction ass, uh, like Chainsaw Man ass comedy of errors, where the assassin sent by Holiday is accidentally um, run over by Spamton in his car. And then they, they turn the assassin's death into uh, a setup, which then implicates human cartels. Or kind of like that. The, the music playing now is um, It's Time to Fight Crime from the One Shot soundtrack. One line is enough to win Hometown's residents over. No wonder Calibian SB is this serious. Yeah, I know. It's um, We're sort of skimming over the fact that this is actually working. That's kind of a flaw. Uh, I really just want to move the scene along desperately at this point, though. Calabine is plotting Watergate or some illegal shit to make sure she wins. Yeah, uh, she has, like, contingency plans, I think is implied. Like, you know, her and Nerdly have, uh, have layers of plans here. The assassin is Kara. Gaster, blaster, faster, plaster, disaster, master, caster, raster, caster. <laughs> Gaster's just like going off and his rap god thing. I, I, this is the rap you deliver while you're doing like the Zoidberg dance, just on the floor in a circle. Asterwards until he faints. Um, I want to make sure this is derailed though by by Gaster though popping in and actually repping Sans finally. Oh, maybe maybe uh, yeah, Undyne comes out and actually backs him up. Suddenly, from the shadows... Uh, yeah, Coleman, stop spamming the same thing in chat there. Uh, I, I, I can see the messages. I'm just not reading them. Suddenly, from the shadows behind Asgore, an unfamiliar face appears, or, uh... Undyne is here. It'd be funny if after the debate, Nerdly's live election model goes from 99.9% .9 chance of victory to 75, and then she plots illegal stuff. Yeah, that, that's good, uh, Oatsen. Just like Watergate. Wait, we, we can we can flesh this out. I want some more holiday reactions here. still couldn't stop himself from mega cheating. What a lad. Hey me. Just told some people that we're gonna make clapter a word. Thank you. Appreciate that. 
What this town needs is a war on drugs. Um, we, we can't fully lampshade how stupid this is. Like, cause, cause she brought up before, like, as an actual talking point that there is an opioid crisis. So it's not complete bullshit. She knows that this is a, like, a legitimate talking point. She just wasn't expecting Asgore to actually jump onto this bandwagon here. Um, the, the trying to describe Kaloween's reaction is made a bit more difficult by the fact that she has no describable anatomy. Um, I'm, I'm hitting a lot of brick walls here with like facial expressions. Uh, okay, five dollars from Algie Satchel, and then she saw Terry, seemingly mad. He had never seen him so angry, glaring at Asgore. He dropped his drink and was slip slipping and stomped away. Strange. Oh, because he's the, the head of the mafia. I remember that plot point. I remember. That we can we can put that in actually. We can just set that up and leave it as a thread to be resolved. Um, how the fuck do I describe this reaction? She has eyes. Yeah, that, that's good. I want to see, like... Her, her brow would crease. What if I describe some imaginary piece of anatomy? What's a glabella again? Let me look at what a glabella is. It's the smooth part of the forehead. Hmm, that's too specific though, yeah. Halloween felt the tissue above her facial eyes crease in spite of herself. There we go. Halloween's dorsal fin shook. <laughs> I'll use that eventually, I like that. The corpus colossum got swollen. No, the sans cutout isn't responding because no one is actually addressing it yet. It, it, it only speaks when spoken to. This was nonsense. Uh, I don't want to go fully into like a Jojo monologue about like how she's breaking down his motivations and shit. Her pedipalps clenched? <laughs> I'll use that one too, I like that. Her pedipalps clenched. Ocular organ was an elegant but facial eye is? Well, ocular organ just means eye. 
That it's just a, a verbose way of saying eye. Facial eye implies that she has non-facial eyes. Sans cut out says, here comes the grub. I want a child that MP3 is playing. Yep. Uh, but she couldn't respond because it was her who originally brought the topic up. Or maybe something like that. She calmed herself there. <laughs> oh god. There's no way his platform had legs to stand on after just one day. She just goes, I'm Police Chief Undyne, and I endorse this message. That's literally all she says. Are these ever going to cover something remotely re related to Delta Rune's story? No. No, of course not. Of course not. That's for that's what Toby's job is. That's not my job. I just write about political feuds, apparently. $2 from Algie Satchel. She raised her waddles as in the red part of a chicken. Yes, I'm aware of what a waddle is. I may incorporate that. We also have pedipalps and a dorsal fin to work with. Uh, now, now, now this gets a rise out of holiday. Um, wait, this doesn't need to be in italics. Undyne, ha Undyne had gone turncoat since yesterday? At first, there was no reaction from the room. The crowd seemed too dumbfounded to generate so much as an embarrassed cough. Then, slowly, a, a smattering of clapter. Then a bit more. Halloween glared at Nerdly, who looked to be engaged in an all-out wrestling match with his laptop. He looked up, expression, uh, expression grave, and made a frantic song gesture across his neck. This was getting out of hand. All right. Yes, please, Chief Undyne reminds everyone who she is. Please, Chief Undyne. Perfectly in character, though, you have to admit. Yeah, Nerdly did not account for this.
Let me think here. Okay, so this is where uh, now Gaster has to like break up the scene here. Just as Mayor Holiday is trying to recover. Okay, okay, let me think, let me think. Actually, I'm gonna stall for time here. I just remembered that there was um, a piece of fan art that I was notified of and then didn't actually look at. Um, arts and crafts, I suppose. Oh, there's stuff already. Wait, how recent is this? Oh, it, it was a song. I see, I see. By uh, Dr. Bree. Let's, let's listen to this. So this is like Sansa's theme, but played in the style of Gaster's theme. Maybe this music comes on, and then Gaster makes his entrance. It's just to listen to the whole thing, by the way. It's about half done now. It fits the Gaster's dancing. Oh, this is such a fucked mashup. This turns into megalovania for no reason. No, G Gaster is not Sansa's campaign manager. He's just here to promote his album. That was wonderful. That was very cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to this. You needed to redirect the topic fast. Uh, the lo-fi, come back. Five bucks from Mooks, thank you. Uh, I think it'd be ha ha funny funny if Mooks was just in the background during Gaster rap. Uh, like the, the GF and Five Night, uh, Friday Night Funkin, that's the game. Could be, I could do that. Just, th there's a lot of these like random sight gags that could be put in there. I, I completely forgot about Toby Fox being in the scene, by the way. Like, there's just no room for him. Why does Halloween have pedipalps? Why not? Can you prove to me using tangible evidence that Halloween holiday does not have pedipalps? Five nights at fucking. That's that's what the game is, right? <laughs> and also Mooks was there. Mooks and Toby Fox can both be sitting on the speaker. There we go. Um... Her mind raced through talking points. Land value taxes, traffic bylaws, 
school supply fundings. Shouldn't she be aghast that Undyne is turning on her more? Yes. I suppose so. But also, you know, putting too many emotions into the scenes makes them kind of long. We've got to keep it snappy here. This is, this is how early Homestuck does it, right? There's so much fucking shit happening in early Homestuck that it has to ignore, like, the characters' reactions to things to keep the plot going along. Because if they actually stop and like internalize what they're thinking about, and it's dealt with realistically, you get Act Six. That, that that's my uh, at, at least how I think of Homestuck working. We can use that as an analogy at least. December holiday has been Muffet the whole time. That's not what. That's why she's not in the game. Holy shit. You figured it out, except Muffet already fell out of Asgore's attic earlier in the fic, so I guess not. And she just gets cut off by Gaster now. So it's like her attempts at recovering the situation are just obliterated by whatever the fuck the, the third party is doing. Uh, is it called a backing track? <laughs> Dank yet danker. Uh, Asgore saying Hochi Mama. Yeah, that it didn't seem to fit. I had it on my mind, but like it, it had too much momentum. <laughs> Fracking tax breaks won't bring your daughter back. Halloween, <laughs> holy shit. Let me just Google that term real quick. I swear it's a real term. Uh, a recorded instrumental or vocal or accompaniment in a pop singer or pop number. Uh, it says pop though, not hip hop. Is it specifically pop? Why would it be specifically pop? Ground in. Uh, Five dollars from Algie Satchel once more. December holiday walks up. Hi guys, I'm back from vacation. And then everyone starts screaming. What? I forget if there were earlier suggestions in chat for December having some role in this. Or no, someone said like I think like December comes back and then then she gets hit by Spamton's car, <laughs> which would be goofy as fuck. Cram everything chat suggests into one paragraph, it won't disrupt the pacing at all. That's how pacing works, right. Uh, December and the Hitman both get hit by Spamton's car at the same time. A six-foot subwoofer descended from the rafters on wires. Hey, 
and landed behind the pulpit of the third candidate, Sands. who had not said or done anything this entire time. There we go. The problem is, how do I just... If we have Mooks and Toby Fox on the speaker, how do I even describe that? How do I even describe... Do I just say Mooks and Toby Fox were on the speaker? One person in chat says yes, okay. Wonderful. This is like getting into My Immortal writing now. It's just like, Mooks and Toby Fox were both there. They were jamming out to My Chemical Romance. Uh, in backwards baseball caps. Okay. Just the most deranged shit. It's just now derailing. <laughs> uh, will the knight appear? Adding in chat cameos makes it too ridiculous. It does, but you know, Mooks deserves it. For Mooks, I'll do it. Uh, I'll add some footnotes, maybe. Maybe that'll help. Um, where, where's the footnote? There we go. enough and then the exact same footnote for Toby Fox <laughs> there we go Gaster is nine feet tall in this cannon. That's my head cannon. Sure, it's spelled gray. There we go. Nine foot tall skeleton in a uh, turtleneck sweater and dark gray overcoat. The gold chains.
gesticulated frantically and uh <laughs> um nonsensically Wildly. <laughs> Seeming to adhere vaguely to the beat of the music. Uh, I'm just gonna go full verbose here, thesaurus mode. There you go. Let's read the whole paragraph here. Oh, I scammed Algie Satchel again. Sorry about that. I was very focused. Okay, we got $5 from Algie Satchel. Spam then hits the man. Man sure is bumpy, road to heaven. And why is this Kungadero so dusty? Yes. All right. Um, I... See, if you save that till when you get to the part where you write that, then I can just add it. Uh, I'm, I'm in danger of sort of forgetting that, though. <laughs> I do like that. I do like that. Man sure is bumpy, and why is this Kangadero so dusty? Alright. We've got to press onward here, though. Um, maybe now the, the sands cut out. Um... Like, pipes up and, like, tries to deliver some hype speech for, for Gaster. Uh, now I start inserting the rap lyrics, I think. Uh, is there one where he introduces himself? Um. Oh, I... Hmm. Uh... I'm a lion, I'm a panther, call me gaster, call me faster, I'm a cheetah, not a cheater, adultery sucks. Now that has to be for the end, uh, can't blow that. I'm blasted with my gaster blaster in your fucking snout. Opium got me to the core of these boring rappers, hail your new master, gaster. I don't think you want to reference opium again, though, That that's kind of nonsense. Uh... Here comes the grub. Hmm. Hey, here it's Gaster, serious delirious. What if he just says Gaster coming at ya? Uh, uh, this is going to be in a different font, I said. It's green. Why is it green? Oh, because I highlighted it. We'll, we'll make it wingdings eventually. Let's just start up here. Perfect. He's just immediately gaster. There's no suspense. Make a speech green? Sure. I'm not sure why. Sure. It's a green... Gaster speaks in green text for some reason. Has to come at you. Serious, delirious, darkness, to be mysterious. Turtlenecks and bottlenecks appearing out like parsecs, looking for something very, very interesting. Dark, yet darker. I make it with a marker. <laughs> like, what's he talking about?
Now I'm gonna have to change it back every time. What if we don't acknowledge any reactions through this process? It just completely derails into like the gaster zone for a while. It's like there's, we don't even acknowledge how anyone else is interpreting this. His name is E.B. Garman? <laughs> That's funny, actually. Five dollars from Brian Nieves. Spamton should go to Sans's shop and start arguing with the cutout Sans, ending in a fight where Spamton somehow loses. Uh, but s actual Sans is in the shop right now. But maybe maybe later that could happen in theory. Um, I, I, I kind of want to keep it to just it's Asgore who has the recurring scenes at Sans's shop if those occur. LG Satchel donates two dollars to say I realized there is a mistake in my name and changed it. I don't know what it was, but thank you for the donation. Did you swap around the A and the E maybe? That that's my only guess. Oh, the text should be in all caps, you're right. Um there's no easy way to change that though, is there? Again, this all needs post-processing anyway. There there is a way to do it, says Outsin. Is there a way to do it in Google Docs or do I have to use an external website? Oh, you can do it. Look at that. Cool. I never knew that. I think it's delirious. How do you spell that? There we go. Uh, why is it? There we go. Um, the uh, okay, so I have to continue this bullshit. Uh, something else has to happen. Uh, still in courier new. The formatting. Wrapping. Uh, we need more um, more lines from the Undertale dialogue dump for Sans now. Hang on. This is going to be like a symphony of chaos here. We have to have Gaster rapping, and then Undertale lines from Sans are providing like hype interjections. Here comes the grub. Here comes the grub. <laughs> All right, I like that. Just here comes the grub. Uh, in Google Docs, isn't there a thing for symbols? Says Algie Sancho with another two dollars. There is. I don't think it includes wingdings though. It's for mathematical uh, Unicode stuff, and uh, I don't think wingdings are any special Unicode symbol. They're just a font. Says. This has just been one incredibly long scene. That's kind of remarkable. Just sands. Okay, we, we have some good hype beast lines. That's still too low. Yeah. Coming right up. Hey, pal. Bon appetit. <laughs> Yeah, bon appetit. This is good. It capitalized it. There's two P's. Gaster just keeps rapping for a while.
Um, I'm, I'm the sound from the clouds getting skeleton of trains. You're the captain from the cloud. All people speak in hands. It just barely rhymes a little bit. Let's just go like this for a while. Sarcasm isn't fun. What comes after thrice anyway? Man, isn't my brother cool? Oh, you've you've done it. You've nailed it. Uh, Sans says my brother eleven times. My brother has a very special attack. My brother seems like he's having fun. Isn't my brother cool? <laughs> We'll save this to the end, but I just want to type it out. Oh, I, I didn't disable the gas. Sorry, sorry, everyone. <laughs> Since we started cooking lessons, he's been improving a lot. You've been busy, huh? Yeah, that, that one's good, too, actually. Does that have a comma? Yes. It's always funny. Gaster just does this for a little while. We have the material, why not use it? Uh... All these menial material tasks got me rapping through masks. Beware the man who beats in hands. Always in the top five. Rave dive. My PhD don't deter me. No, I'm just going to tack that on for no reason right here. Somehow it, it absorbed the formatting. Oops. <laughs> okay, this is that's that's enough wrapping for now. The, the thick is completely derailed at this point, uh, sort of as intended. It would have worked better with Buck Bumble. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's too fast. Fuck. Yeah. Serious delivery is back to stupid and serious. Turtlenecks and bottlenecks appear in other parasites. Looking for something very, very interesting. Dark, dark, dark. There's no fucking consistency to the syllables. It's impossible to actually sing. On the sound cloud from the cloud, so and so, ten of trans here in the crowd, in the crowd, all the people speaking hands. Oh my god. All these menial materials. Okay, I'm gonna. All these menial material tasks. We wrap into mass. We're the man who beats in hands. Always in the top five for the rave diamond PhD. What's the term you know? Most deeper me. Okay, that's enough of that. Enough of that. Maybe I should just specify it's. No, I can't specify that it's Buck Bumble because we have the song that uh, someone made just for this. Bum to the boom to the bum to the bass. The last part was really good. I do not believe you. Isn't my brother cool? Uh, Gaster's like he's he's doing his hand signs so ferociously that he's like slapping people in the face as he walks up the aisle here.
Uh, we need the uh, music back. Point out that he's on the verge of passing out. He's sweating and shaking. <laughs> That's what he's like coked out of his mind. Uh, have I already used that word? Yes. Um, I can make this better, okay. Rhythmically helicoptering limbs. Uh, several members of the crowd, I think. He finally arrived on stage and immediately climbs on top of Sansa's table. I guess they have tables and pulpits, that's fine. Uh, yeah, um, and then, and then I, yeah, he's on the verge of passing out, right. Is visibly beaded with sweat. Present tense again, god damn it. Under the spotlight, his bone was visibly beaded with sweat, and his entire body shook unnaturally. Uh, I think I'll leave it at the sweat for now. Scammed again? Oh uh, shit, uh. Another two dollars from LG Satchel. I'm a real Deus Ex Machina rapping all over ya. Uh, yes, the Deus Ex Machina. I, I think I'll use that. His knees quaked visibly. <laughs> Wait, here's what you do. Just a bit of origami. Yeah. Um, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna have to generate some of my own lyrics here so we can promote his album.
You should be giving out demo tracks. Yeah, he he has like his whole coat is just full of uh, cassette tapes, and he starts throwing them out to the crowd like candy. If anyone here has watched Odd Taxi, the rapping scenes are exactly what I'm imagining Gaster doing. Oh hell yeah! Odd Taxi fan in chat. I love that show. Yeah, it's I'm it's it's that, but like the the in, the guy in that show is actually good at it. Gaster's like really bad, <laughs> and he's <laughs> he's apparently like coked out of his mind right now to get over the stage fright. That's sort of what I guess is implied by the the sweat and the shakes. Uh, he's got to shout at his, his bro Sans, uh, running for president or something. Shout out my brother here, Sans, be trying to run in for president. Like the grammar is just wrong. Yeah, his palms are sweaty. Papyrus spaghetti. Knees weak, arms are sweaty. Oh my god, I accidentally referenced the, uh, fucking, uh, the Eminem song. Town's newest resident. Town's newest resident, yeah. The Eminem song, yeah. The blight of the innocent made from cancerous candy true carcinogen genesis. Sega Genesis. I don't know what that means, but it's going in. Page without formatting had no effect. Uh. There we go. <laughs> it's the American word for Dreamcast. Car he doesn't know the word for carcinogeneticist. <laughs> It's funnier if he just doesn't use the right term, I think. Okay, he's got to rep his album now. Uh, okay, um... The album was called Him, right? Holland and Money. Uh, he's, he's got a rap about his album. Uh, he's here to re rep... Um... Look for the Gaster Bear album in stores November 3rd. He doesn't even try to integrate it into lyrics. He just like plugs it straight up. That's pretty fun. Uh.
look for Uh, look for my new album, him on Bandcamp and SoundCloud. Maybe he didn't get onto Spotify, it's just Bandcamp and SoundCloud. Now a chunk of present tense. Ah. Uh, got it. <laughs> SoundCloud and other online storefronts today. Woo! Two dollars from Algie Satchel. Hauling and money, running, falling and running. That doesn't. Hauling and money, falling and running. Money running. I'm sure. <laughs> Chat says I'm hauling and money from Algie Satchel. <laughs> Chat is right. It's it's true. I used visibly twice. Hang on. Um. Visibly. Oh, I did. Hauling and money, falling and running. I'm not sure where that fits is the thing. It's very short, it doesn't rhyme. I should plug the album in the narration. I'm not sure how that makes sense. I'm not sure if I can even imagine how that would work. Or maybe I'll try anyway. Let's see what happens. Uh, we were in 12. Uh, okay, well, uh, he already said everything, though. Is, is there, like, a, a format I could use to, like, list the album? Like, I'm not sure how this would work. except for the incredibly loud music then he, he maybe he comes back and tries to like explain what the album means specify that it stands for Holland and money he like he like rekindles the uh, the rap no you know what I'll do I'll, I'll put in a footnote those are always good How do I reference all of his rapper names at once here?
Uh, and then Gaster teleports to Brazil, says Allergy Satchel. Uh, uh, Allergy Satchel with another $2. I don't think he teleports to Brazil. I don't think that's on the table. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't think we, we have Brazil in the fic right now. Can I put a footnote in the footnote? Will it let me do that? Fuck you, you coward. Google Docs is a coward. I can do it myself, actually, I think. If I use a superscript notation, how do I do that? There we go. And then here, shit, shit, why is it doing that? It's deleting the hard return, that's what, okay. This is delicate, but I can do it. Here it is. It's a sub footnote. Um, comments on the dot for patrons would be a good idea. I don't think I can make a link that lets you comment without- and, and also have a link that doesn't let you comment. That would mean uh, opening the fic up for everyone to comment on, so unfortunately that's not possible. the exact same thing. Gaster has- Irving the Fourth donates two dollars to say Gaster has offshore accounts in South Panama. Okay? <laughs> do, do you want me to specify that he takes payment in like cryptocurrency or something too? Wonderful. Did I do a hard return? No. Nope. It just explains what it stands for. There's, there's an exclamation mark both inside and outside of the quote. Perfect. And then he starts rapping again. Oh, it should be bone coins as out sin. Oh god, Gaster is here, says Mel. <laughs> yes. And Gaster. You really missed his entrance. It was quite a thing. Uh, we need more rap lines. So we, this is like just the really shitty lines here. Uh... At the bottom.
I'm the master of the sound, you disaster on the ground. If you mess with my clout, get ready to get blasted with my gas to blaster and your fucking snout. That'll do. Blasted, you fucking snout. <laughs> then he, he goes on to the, uh, it, it just deteriorates. What was the one where he just... <laughs> what if it's all of these in a row? The lion, I'm a panther, call me gaster, call me faster, I'm a cheetah, not a cheater, adultery sucks! And then he just starts doing this. <laughs> this is deranged, but I love it, okay. What's a really funny style of dwan uh, dwance? That's what I meant to say. A really funny style of dance that he could just start doing here. He starts hitting the woe. What does that mean? <laughs> it's a real dance? What? Uh, it needs to be foot heavy. He does the Dougie. I don't know what that means. Hit the gritty. <laughs> what does do the Dougie? Some kind of hip hop dancing. Uh oh. Mute that. Look. I haven't watched a tutorial on how to hit the Dougie. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. At extreme speed. Rash to clap there. How long can we extend this? I just want him eventually just to fall off the table and then like break his arm. That's what I'm leading up to. That's a shout out to my own weird, uh, never to be published, unfinished fanfic that I wrote years ago where Gaster unironically breaks his arm off as a part of the plot. And it was meant to be taken seriously a little bit. I have to get that in now. Give Sans a gun. $2, the Poison Dance from Scrubs. I, I don't know what that is. Wait, okay, $5 from Algie Satchel. The final request uh, today. Gaster holds up a cross and starts making references to faith. Um, I, I can put that in actually. She says adultery sucks. He flashes a golden crucifix from his wallet chain. He'd start to do the Dougie at extreme speed. <laughs> the table. <sh> <laughs> uh, oh, the seventeenth album. We don't need to today is in the footnote as well as that.
The cross? You mean that weird rigid sign of the angel? No, I mean a crucifix. Like, Jesus is on it. <laughs> Wait, chat says, When I was younger, some girls told me to hit the woe, and I just said the crash bandicoot. Woo! And then I proceeded to hit the whip, and they kept to hit... Just kept to hit the woe. I was very confused. That's, um... Give that to Berg, uh, uh, Toby Fox, and he can make that the next conversation with the Burger Pants in Chapter 3. Uh, as you say, a bat monster in the crowd dies when he pulls out the cross. The religious symbol in, uh, of Deltarune was the Deltarune. Well, no, Gaster's Christian. That's what you don't get about this. Hamter. Ameter. Faster, laster. Um. Matt. Uh. Tur. Chaster. Dagoth er Then he just falls off the table. There's no quote also. <laughs> I'm not putting that in J Joshua Bowen. I'm not doing that. Your mom smashed her. Goth, or your mom smash her. Then he falls off the table. Yeah, yeah okay. And a tangle of, um... In a tangle, tangle of angular limbs. <laughs> you haven't been here since the first stream? Oh god, help you. We're in the part where uh, Gaster uh, comes into Sans's uh, campaign debate to promote his album. Uh, as Sans is actually not there and he just um, mans his storefront and leaves a cardboard cutout to do the debate for him. There we go. That's why I wanted to hold off on any uh, explicit swear words for now. Uh, text. There we go. Wasn't this a political thriller a couple of hours ago? Oh, it is. It still is. And then, uh, like, 
Asgore and Undyne have to do first aid because they're ch they're trained as uh, the police ch the the chiefs of police. I don't know who else in town would be. I guess there's there's hospital employees. This is the part in the car cat goes to a convention where Dave cosplayers do absolutely awful rap battles at each other. <laughs> yes. Okay, we have to, re like, snap back to reality here. Regain a semblance of control over the narrative. This is intentionally just a whole clusterfuck, like a whole page and a half of just Gaster doing whatever he wants. No one else gets to interject. No one else's POV is allowed. It's just Gaster clusterfucking the entire event. And now we have to go back to what it was before. Um, okay, you know what? To, to recenter my chakras here, uh, I'm going to go take a, a, a quick break and like get a snack to eat. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to know how to write this again. Alright, th that's the plan. I'm going to be back in a couple minutes. Just sit tight and think of cool ideas.
I'm back. All right. So most of you are here. Good job not leaving. Thank you all. Okay. So. What have you said? We need to get Gaster out of the scene and pivot it back to the mayor challenging Asgore's drug policy. How do we do that? Hmm. I'm not sure we actually get back to the drug policy in this scene. I, <clears throat> I think we've sort of made the point that the mayor has serious politics, Asgore has um, sort of radical, nonsensical drug war <laughs> politics, <laughs> and then Sans is just shitposting. I think that's been set up. Andrew, the Spamton toaster scene is partially present tense. That's very interesting. But uh, I think... I think to further derail, because we have to... Holiday has to be worried about Asgore here, right? I think to, to further derail her idea of how this campaign would go, Asgore now gets to be the hero by, by pouncing on Gaster and giving him first aid um, before the they can get him to the hospital. And uh, there's um, a particularly deranged method of first aid that comes to mind here. Um, Toby Fox is still in the scene, right? We never said that Toby Fox went away or anything. He's sitting on the speaker canonically. Toby Fox is just here. Mooks is just the same. I'd rather reference Toby Fox than Mooks. Asgore practically leapt to Gaster's side. Um, okay. There we go. His police training was still alive and well deep down. Or right. I'll say.
Flower fertilizer, sure. Gaster has a gold chain connected to a Pokemon card. Uh, sorry, I didn't remove the Gaster. I'm bad for that. I am reading chat now. I should reference Mooks. Uh, no, it would, it would get weird too fast if, if I let Mooks become an actual plot element here. It's, it's, even, it's really weird enough that Toby is here. But that's, like, weird in an abstract sense, not weird as in, like, this is just a person I know. <laughs> hmm. All right, they have to take charge of the situation here. Uh, no, I've already used... Left to... Um... Whatever, it's fine. Toby can steal Gaster's arm. You know, here's here's the method of first aid that I have in mind here, which is also uh, uh it's hard to explain uh, where the reference comes from. But um, if you take a determination from a human, which is known to melt monsters into goo, in Undertale, I don't give a shit that this is Deltarune. You you use that. You melt the tip of the broken arm. My theory is that you could just stick it back on like it was a candle that had broken, and you could just melt it a bit, then stick it back on, and it'd be fine. Does that not make perfect sense, chat? Like it's completely logical in context. Oh, hey, Undyne tries CPR and just like breaks all Gaster's ribs. <laughs> that makes sense to me. The stream is still pending? No, it isn't. You're behind, I think. Kind of odd to go into that much thought of detail after this shit. Kind of odd, says chat. Oh, mouth to mouth. Alright, Asgore administers mouth to mouth and, and then dispatches Undyne to harvest determination from Toby Fox. It's unclear whether Undyne actually worked under Asgore before, or if she just replaced him after he was fired. Would I marry you? No. Does she just squeeze Toby like a lemon and it drips out of him? Or wait, no, you don't need humans for determination anymore in Deltarune, do you? You could just focus it into a knife, perhaps. Maybe that's how it works. Asgore stabs Gaster to heal him. Yes. He could work with this. We want the gay. Yes, I'll make Asgore kiss Gaster. Fine, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, this has to be played off as if this is a situation they're both familiar with.
He scans. He scanned over the skeleton's gangling wreckage. Um, I need to look up what the name is when you break your arm. I don't know any medical terminology. If only JD was in chat to explain to me medical terminology for when you break your arm. Does anyone know? Like, uh, like tibial ulnar fracture or something? It's, it's funnier if he knows the correct term. Breakology. This is what breakbeat is. Breakcore. I guess I'll look it up. Um, oh, there's a bunch of different kinds. Damn, look at these all. Torus fracture, metaphysial fracture, green stick fracture, galazi fracture. Montegia Fracture, holy shit. Um, there is usually a disp- okay, a, a Giliazi Fracture. Let's, let's read this together, this is fascinating chat. Um, injury of both the bones of the forearm. There's usually a fracture in the ulna, and the top head of the radius is dislocated. This is a very severe injury. That sounds the best. It's the most severe injury. Oh, these are in children? Why are they just in children, though? Whatever. We have a name. Why not use it? It's called the Azzy Fracture. It's named after how Azriel died. Good. Perfect. Uh. He, he just becomes extraordinarily uh, professional for no reason. Like, he's now a surgeon. I don't care if it's realistic. Undyne nods explosively. She knows exactly what to do. I want to recontextualize Gaster's, like, uh, the, the cracks in his eyes as facial tats, because he's a SoundCloud rapper. <laughs> Chat says, I leave to take a shower, and when I come back, you're looking at medical websites trying to figure out what injury works best for Gaster falling off a table. Wonderful. Um, so Undyne needs to find 
there, there's two schools of thought here. Either a human to like squeeze out the determination from, or just a knife. Who in the crowd would have a knife? We just need to think about that. A jello knife. Mm, that would take a long time to make though. Oh, is Chris is here! Chris is here! Chris loves knives. Perfect. You've done it, chat. This solves the problem. <laughs> Chris is just like completely uh, despondent sitting in the crowd somewhere. Like, what's happening? Um, Algy Santa with $2 says, Froggit has a knife. You are too late. We, I, I'm fully on the Chris bandwagon, I'm afraid. That works far too well. Um, $5 for mooks. Mr. Cunningham, how much do I have to pay to kiss Gaster? Um, I'm not sure he can consent at this point, mooks. I'm going to have to wave you off for now. Make Chris into a determination smoothie. Yes. Footnote. Oh wait, shit it. I want it to be footnote 6, not 5. But I've already used footnote 5. Damn it, it won't let me do it. Oh well, we're gonna have to uh, double up on footnote 5 here. Oh, I've got it, I've got it. Perfect. So many footnotes, <laughs> yes. Right. I just want to make sure that's true. You just got back? What the fuck are you looking at? Well, that's a good question. It's a good question. Maybe Sans makes some <laughs> completely stupid comment as, as Asgore is giving gas or mouth to mouth resuscitation. What's a funny comment gas or uh, Sans could make? Other, uh, here comes the grub is, is potential. Here comes the grub. <laughs> um, over level fourteen, huh? Okay. Want some fried snow? You can do better, right? Yeah, let's, I'm gonna take that. Honestly, it's super embarrassing. Now let, let's not make fun of Asgore for it. We wanna... We don't wanna imply anything on Sans's part here. Um, I just use his name. He 
He immediately wrapped his lips around Gaster's weird malformed, well, weird malformed jaw mouth thing. Down his, he doesn't have a windpipe. And the sands just chimes in. Asgore took this to- You can do better, right? The sand's cutout chimed in. Asgore took this to heart and puffed with redoubled out, uh, effort. Two dollars from Azathoth, the great sleeper. Will I recap sooner at the end? Um, when the scene finally ends, I might do a recap. I really didn't think this scene would take up the entire stream, but it really has. We were at 18 pages, and now we're at 23. Which really isn't that many more, I have to say. Actually, only really at 22. Is it really only four pages? No, it's more like five and a half pages. God, this is slowing down. This is a disaster. Dear God, okay. Whatever. Looking forward only, no looking back. Oh, someone says that it blows through Gaster's skull like a bone flute. That's good. Can't rush perfection. Uh, um, another two dollars from LG Satchel. A gun with one bullet. I don't know what that's a reference to. Sides. Pirates of the Caribbean? I don't think it's Pirates of the Caribbean somehow. Shouldn't it be a trombone? No. Nah. It's a Faith. Oh, that, the, uh, the Atari looking uh, indie horror game. Yeah, I don't know that one. Uh, I'm still in... Well, how did they go back to create your new green text? That's weird. Alright, so final decision chat. What, what, uh, how does this work? Do, does Undyne, like, extract determination from Chris, or do they use the, the knife trick? Do we stick with Undertale cannon or Deltarune cannon? Chris does the stabbing? But Chris wouldn't need to do the stabbing in this canon, though. Chris knife? She takes the knife. Um, it seems really split. Maybe I'll do a- I can do a poll in chat, right? I can just do that, I think. Yeah, I'll do a poll. Alright. Okay, perfect. I made a poll in chat. Let's see if it works. Oh, it's it's fluctuating quite a bit. Uh the knife is winning for sure. Yeah. They voted! Yeah, the poll is a reference to democracy, which is a reference to election talking. 
Yeah, the knife wins. All right. And pull. Where's the vanilla extract option? Extract vanilla. I don't know there was vanilla involved. Uh, we need a brief cameo from Chris. There we go. Undyne returned holding a knife, Asgore recognized as belonging to Chris. He reflexively looked up toward the crowd. Chris was standing in the aisle looking thoroughly unimpressed. He smiled. He smiled at them. And turned back to the collapsed skeleton. Uh, <laughs> do you want Chris to say cringe again? It says outsin. This is going to be a pattern, I suppose. Cringe. Reminds me of the first request. Hey Chris, do you want some grugs? Chris looks confused. Cringe. <laughs> it, it, we're kind of back at that, honestly, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's that's just there now. Karinge. Oh wait, we can quote, we can quote the line. Quote the most unpleasant line in Undertale. Do y'all know the one? Uh, Asgore. There we go, just think of it like a visit to the dentist. Perfect. Um, maybe we cut the scene before seeing exactly what Asgore does. And then it's revealed that it was actually just... Because it's ambiguous what he's going to do now, right? But then we can reveal that it was like... The direct quotes from Undertale are used in the most shit-ass way possible. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. Why don't I like that quote? Oh, I didn't mean it's it's like a bad writing. It like it's just legitimately uh, unpleasant in in its context. It's kind of kind of real, kind of grim. Or was it a visit? Or was it a visit? All right, we can finally end this fucking scene. <laughs> Boom.
no graphic mouth to mouth? There absolutely was a graphic mouth to mouth scene. Did he miss the part where um, he immediately wrapped his lips around Gaster's weird malformed jaw mouth thing and began heaving air down his empty neck hole, producing a flute like no flute like noise. I think that's graphic enough. How does Asgore know about dentists? I'd assume that monsters might also want dentists. <laughs> now that was epic. Two dollars from Algae Satchel. What about Spamton? Spamton, he's doing his own thing. We, we can get back to Spamton, perhaps. Um, okay, so here's the choice here. Here's the choice. Do we cut immediately to the hospital? Where, um, like, I don't know, Sans can chicken on Gaster and see that his arm has been melted, then refused? Uh, or do we do something else? That's the question. Spamton was supposed to end the scene. Oh, wait, what? Oh, fuck, I forgot about that. Um, what, what was Spamton supposed to do again? Crashes into the wall. Yeah, the way it's worked out, we'll have to end a different scene with that, I think. Because getting to spammed and crashing through a wall would mean, like, resolving all of this within the same scene. And, uh, we avoid doing that by cutting to a different scene and just showing the aftermath. Something else. Something else says chat. All right. Um, what if we? Uh, what if we now do the holiday cutaway where she is like discussing the aftermath of this, and we can learn indirectly what happened to Gaster? Because she she would have to go and like pay a visit to the hospital to like wish Gaster well to preserve public image, right? She would have to visit. Noel should come. Yeah, we, we should have Noel in this scene, I think. Is Rudy dead? No, he's also just in the hospital currently. It works, says chat. All right. Huh. Okay, how exactly to do this then? Should Noel also be a politics psycho? No, I think Noelle and Chris just, like, are, are sick and tired of their parents' bullshit. I think that's the best way to take it. I don't think it's ever implied that Noelle has any interest in her mom's political career. She doesn't have much of a public image. But it's election time. That, that changes when you're up for re-election. Noelle is a diehard anarchist. Uh, Noelle is the secret opium kingpin. We already have about seven candidates for that. Uh, okay. So what what what's this then? Is is this Mayor Holiday at the hospital, going to the hospital, or just leaving the hospital and going home? And we learned through her recollection, like a summary of what happened in the hospital. Any thoughts? We got one taker for directly at the hospital. Another one for leaving, one for going. All right, <laughs> all three are selected now. Hospital. Recollection seems interesting. Okay, we have three for leaving. Four for leaving. Explaining it to Rudy. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> the thing with in introducing Rudy, I'd have to figure out how to write uh, like another character. 
Okay, I think most people are saying leaving at this point. Let's just try that. Let's see if this works. That's sort of an interesting angle. No, this is before chapter one. Rudy is not dead. Okay, there's a lot to work through here. This is going to be like a big de-escalation scene, which means we have to do the, the the tedious task of actually addressing plot threads and character reactions. I forget how many L's are in holiday. What? what? I guess it's two? I, I don't know why I just blanked on that. There's only one Ellen holiday? Uh Wait, there we go. Uh, what's the make and model of uh, Mayor Holiday's car? Chat wants three L's. Okay. Oh, yeah, is there a parking lot? Um, it's- the parking lot is behind it. You can't see it because of the perspective. Um... A big Ford truck. Uh... A Mercedes-Benz? What, what model of Mercedes-Benz? I'm looking for, like, year. Like, a 1998. It- it has to be this way. 1995 Mercedes-Benz, okay. Uh, Blick is still driving her. Uh, $2 from Al LG Satchel to say Kungadero, fine. Mercedes Kungadero. Wonderful. It's a Mercedes Benz, says Ralsei. And yeah, that that's good. I, I wasn't even thinking about that. Huh. 2005 Pontiac Aztec. We we can specify that if we have another car. Actually, I should have done that with Asgore's pickup truck. I, I missed the opportunity. Rousey steals the Mercedes Benz at the end. Maybe one day. Um, so she should be grumpy as fuck right now. Don't you dare tell me that's incorrectly spelled. Okay, um, what's the word count? Actually, should, we should do a recap of that scene now. This is a good time to do a recap of that last scene, uh, and check the word count. We're at, say, 6,900. Nice. So over half an umris now. Uh, 
Uh, let's do that scene. Let's see how it plays out all in one go. All right. Um, oops, I don't have this full screen anymore. There we go, that's better. Okay, let's start here. Sands was there, sitting with eerie stillness behind one of the three extra cheap folding tables arrayed at the front of the room. The cord of a lapel mic trailed across the stage and terminated on his hoodie, despite the fact that a wireless PA system had been installed in the room last month. Asgore jumped, but recovered quickly. Howdy there, Sams. You are, uh, rather early today, are you not? Hey, don't worry. I'll give you a full refund. Ha ha ha. Yes. Asgore paced toward the stage. Though, he uncharacteristically struggled to make conversation. Something about this janitor always managed to throw him off kilter. How was this whole campaigning thing been treating you? I know for myself it has been quite the adjustment. Maybe it's a little strange, but sometimes it's nice to have someone call you out for being lazy. I suppose you are right about that, Asgore mused while fumbling with his own lapel mic. The foreshadowing of the tables being extra cheap, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. I was just picturing really cheap tables. Uh, $2 from Algie Satchel to repeat the previous request for a 13 arch artillery shell to hit the building. Y y y y y you're not even trying anymore. Okay, we, we don't have 13 inch artillery shells hitting the building. We have Gaster walking into the building with the impact of a 13 inch artillery shell. That's not how we do things around here. But thank you, though. Um, where was I? Back in my college days, I admit I was a bit of a slacker myself. I never dreamed I could have made it as far as chief of police, let alone mayor. But I suppose Toriel has a way of bringing out the best in... He trailed off. Will an electron trucking audiobook be made for the channel? Maybe. Maybe. I'll make a pod fic out of it. Someone who sincerely likes bad jokes has an integrity I can't say no to. Asgore chuckled at that despite himself. Toriel and I had so many things in common, but I'm afraid to say our sense of humor was not one of them. It was something I never appreciated about her enough. Eh, more for me. Asgore bit his tongue, unsure how to respond to that. He instead busied himself for a time, persuading his poster board to stand up on the table. Eventually, he turned back to the skeleton, unable to contain the question at the tip of his tongue. Uh, oh wait, no, the scene actually started here, I realized. Oh no, wait, we have to get to the end to then read the the part, that the new part. Okay, never, never mind. Going back. So, Tor, you and Toriel, you have been spending a lot of time together of late, have you not? Weird, huh? Yes, you could say that. Asgore muttered, brows furrowing. I suppose what I mean to say is, I was wondering if you two had, you know... His throat begins to tighten with mounting horror at the words coming out of his mouth. He tried to think of some way to recontextualize his meaning, but... Well, that's, uh, really childish. Asgore winced and felt blood rise in his cheeks. Now he'd done it. He was once again hopelessly trapped in the machinations of his own choices. All he could hope for now was that the crowd would start filing in soon. What's that hold up? Look, there's nothing to be afraid of. Sans paused and Asgore sheepishly looked over. I'll be frank with you. It's time you learned the truth. What truth? Asgore pressed, voice growing darker despite his best efforts. I'm practically a hot dog tycoon now. Asgore's grip on the table tightened. I've decided it's not going to be your turn, ever. I'm just going to keep having my turn until you give up. The skeleton's face remained as impassive as ever, not even turning to make eye contact with his rival. Take it from me, kid. Someday, you gotta learn when to quit. I'd very much prefer it, Asgore said slowly, icy rage permeating every syllable. If a good-for-nothing dopehead like yourself would stop calling me kid. He flipped the table, words echoing around the auditorium. 
and you thought you missed an entire scene today. No, we, well, this is actually a previous scene, but we added on to it and then went to the next scene, which is sort of the same scene still. Even then, Sans didn't move. After what felt like an eternity, he responded, Here comes the grub. Asgore stood frozen in place, hands still clenched from throwing the table. He heard the tendons in his neck creak as he turned to face the skeleton in total confusion. Here comes the grub. Just baked 10 million pies. Do you want any? Make sure to brush your teeth before crossing the street, Frisk, as much as I like putting hot dogs on your head. At this moment, Sans walked through the door in the back of the room. Finally, new territory. Oh, hey, uh, he said, waddling up toward the stage and carefully not acknowledging the table lodged somewhere in the back row of seats. Looks like this thing's uh, running a bit low on power, huh? Uh, then uh, another okay, another $2 from LG Satchel just to say here comes the grub. There we go. Here comes the grub indeed. He quickly realized that no response would be forthcoming. He gestured to the cardboard cutout of himself sitting beside Asgore. Oh, has this thing been pestering you? Sorry about that. It's just something I got my bro to set up with the help with the workload. The grub cometh. Sans turned the cutout around, exposing the mass of wearing behind it, a and a cluster of knobs with labels like pun frequency, chutzpah, and sentience. There's also a bottle of ketchup for some reason. He clumsily replaced its two AAA batteries. Oh, um, not at all. I was just having some difficulty with uh, unfolding my table, Asgore replied. Yeah, I get you. The hinges on those things are deadly. A moment of tense silence. So, uh, guess I'll be real with you here, since it's just the two of us and you seem to be a good guy and all. By all means, Asgore replied warily. I don't really care about winning this election. Tori's clearly got her own ideas about it, and I want to make her happy. I, I really do. But we both know I'm not cut out for politics. He nodded toward the cardboard and winked. Cut out. I'm not cut out for politics. But you seem to have a real head on your shoulders. I don't know what made you decide to up and run against Holiday, but if you've got your reasons, I wish you luck. The skeleton shrugged and began pacing back toward the door. As for me, I've got a shift today. I'm just going to let my bro use the slot to promote his new album. See ya. The door clunked shut, leaving Asgore alone with his thoughts and a cardboard sans homunculus that was gradually leaking ketchup. There's the new scene. We're now in Mayor Holiday's perspective. The buzz of the crowd reverberated in Halloween Holiday's ear as she stood over her pulpit. As predicted, the seabed fracking issue remained a sticking point with Hometown's aquatic demographic. Fortunately, also as predicted, Hometown's aquatic demographic still consisted entirely of onion sun. If the fracking regulations are loosened, my platform will of course provide refundable tax credits to any aquatic residents whose property values are affected. From the back three rows of seats, onion sun waved a collection of tentacles forlornly. But, but, my home is more than property values, you hear? Miss Halloween, you're you're a big meanie, you hear? Halloween composed herself before responding. This was still within acceptable parameters. A big meanie I may be, Mix San, but I'm a big meanie who understands that this town needs economic stimulus and it needs it fast. And allowing tax breaks for undersea fracking is, at this point in time, the single most promising avenue for accomplishing that. To preserve the integrity of this community, we all need to make sacrifices. As the words left her throat, one of her eyes flicked upward and locked with those of her junior campaign staffer, Nerdly, who was seated deep in the shadow in the back of the room wearing full radio comms gear and thunderously typing into a laptop. He nods once. She'd nailed it. But wait. Nerdly also flashed a finger sign. Damn it, she'd forgotten talking point six. I am confident, she picked back up without any noticeable pause, that in time the benefits will trickle down to everyone, even our aquatic residents. Thunderous applause. The Q&A so far had been textbook. She allowed herself a half-smile, hidden carefully behind a forelimb. And then, from the left, a deep, fatherly voice. Do any of you actually believe that? The crowd's murmurings fizzled and died. All eyes turned to Asgore. He returned their gazes with a steely look of his own. This was nothing like the Asgore of yesterday's debate. Uh, 299 for LG Satchel. Didn't I suggest something about Terry? Yes, the whole Terry, uh, Terry walking out. Maybe I can mention that in the Mayor Holiday scene. I think it could actually fit in there. Because it'll be a quick summary of the aftermath, basically. Uh, 
Economic stimulus this, trickle down that, fancy words. But what use does this community have for words? Hometown is not a collection of charts and property values to be optimized. It is a community of people, and it is for those people that I intend to speak. Silence. The crowd is rapt. Asgore leaned closer to his mic. I have heard the people of this town, Mayor Holiday, and it is not fracking, they demand. He paused for dramatic effect, locking eyes with Onion San, who is now quietly weeping in the corner, and then with a deck of cue cards held above his pulpit. What this town needs is a war on drugs. Halloween felt the tissue above her facial eyes crease in spite of herself. This was nonsense. Was this really his takeaway from their first debate? She quickly calmed herself, though. There was no way his new platform had legs to stand on after just one day. Suddenly, from the shadows behind Asgore, a tall figure looms into the spotlight. Police Chief Undyne. Nyar! I'm Police Chief Undyne, and I endorse this message! The mayor's pedipalp spasmed. What? Undyne had gone turncoat since yesterday? I'll italicize that for emphasis. At first, there was no reaction from the room. The crowd seemed too dumbfounded to generate so much as an embarrassed cough. Then, slowly, a smattering of clapter. Then a bit more. Halloween glared at Nerdly, who looked to be engaged in an all-out wrestling match with his laptop. He looked up, expression grave, and made a frantic song gesture across his neck. This was getting out of hand. She needed to redirect the topic and fast. Her mind raced through talking points. Land value taxes, traffic bylaws, school supply funding. Finally, it dawned on her. Mr. Dreamer, if you'd consider, all, all sound in the room was suddenly drowned in badly mixed hip-hop backbeat. A six-foot subwoofer descended from the rafters on wires and landed behind the pulpit of the third candidate, Sands, who had not said or done anything this entire time. Mooks, footnote two. All characters and events in the story are purely fictional. Any resemblance to individuals living or dead is coincidence. And Toby Fox, footnote three. All characters and events in the story are purely fictional. Any resemblance to individuals living or dead is coincidence. We're both sitting on the speaker in backwards baseball caps and jamming out. The door slammed open at the back of the room, and through it strutted the nine-foot-tall skeleton in a turtleneck sweater and dark gray overcoat. Gold chains jingled from his appendages as he gesticulated wildly, in a manner loosely... Oops. Manner. In a manner loosely correlated with the beat of the music. Uh, Gaster... <laughs> Um, wait, get the Buck Bumble back. Oh wait, no, I need the theme song. What's gonna happen? Gas to come in extra serious, delirious, dark, and stupid, mysterious, turn like some bottlenecks, appearing out and like parasite, like clicking for some things that very interesting, but I gotta go This is impossible. Uh, the sans cutout chimed in from the stage to punctuate the lyrics. Bon appetit! Uh, wait for it. On the sound of the clouds from the clouds, set in the skeleton of trans. Uh, hear the clapping in the crowd, all the people speaking hands. <laughs> this isn't fair. I can't do it. You've been busy, huh? Yeah. All these menial material tasks can be wrapped through mass, be where the man is hands, always in the top five for the rave dive, PhD won't better me, no. Deter me, I mean. Isn't my brother cool? The skeleton walked up the aisle, rhythmically helicoptering limbs, slapping several members of the crowd on his way. He finally arrived on stage and immediately climbed atop Sans's table. Under the spotlight, his bone was visibly beaded with sweat. His knees quaked. Slow down the music? <laughs> You weren't here when I wrote this part. All, all the lyrics come from the chat, basically. Um, I guess we need more music, though. What about now? It's time to rock with the big the buck bumble. I'm a real deus ex machina rapping all over ya. Shut to my brother here, Sam's trying to run up for president. Town's newest resident, yeah, the light of the innocent, made from cancerous candy, true carcinogen genesis, Sega Genesis. Uh. He trailed off. Uh. Look for my new album, him, on Bandcamp, SoundCloud, and other online storefronts. Woo! Footnote 4. Check out WDG's footnote 4.5, aka G Money's, aka Mystery Man, aka Dub G. 17th album, him, on SoundCloud and other digital distribution platforms today. Payments in Ethereum and Bonecoin are accepted. 
uh, footnote return. Silence, except for the incredibly loud music. Uh, we need the music back. Yo, M stands for holiday money. I'm the master of the sound. You disaster on the ground. If you mess up the clout, get ready to get blasted with my gaster blaster in your fucking snout. I'm not mad. I'm a kid. I'm biting off my tongue. It's too hot for the tracks. I'm spitting. They fire out. I'm a lion. I'm a panther. Call me. Uh, let me again. I'm a lion. I'm a panther. Call me gaster. Call me faster. I'm a cheater. Not a cheater. Adultery sucks. He flashes a golden crucifix from his wallet chain. He starts to do the Dougie at extreme speed. The table shudders underfoot. Gaster, buster, fester, buster, disaster, master, caster, raster, crafter, hafter, amateur, amateur, gaster, chaster, dig off there, your mom, smasher. The table collapsed, sending gaster crashing to the stage in a tangle of angular limbs. Fuck, 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 oh shit, it hurts, fuck, oh fuck, my arm, my arm, oh god, help, fuck, my arm is broken, someone help, oh god, it hurts, oh. Before anyone can so much as gasp, Asgore practically leapt to gaster's side. His police training was still alive and well, obscured as it was underneath the years of dust and flower fertilizer. A split second later, Undyne was by his side. Unbelievably, she seemed to be waiting to receive his orders. She could work with this. He scanned over the skeleton's gangling wreckage. The issue was quickly identified. One tensia fracture, he mumbled. Old known radius bifurcated. We need immediate reattachment. Undyne nods explosively and sprints into the crowd. She knows exactly what to do. While waiting for her to return, Asgore bent over Gaster's sweat-drenched, heavily tattooed face. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth would be required. Footnote 5. This is definitely true, says Toby Fox. He immediately wrapped his lips around Gaster's weird malformed jaw mouth thing and began heaving air down his empty neck hole, producing a flute-like noise. You can do better, right? The sand's cutout chimed in. Asgore took this to heart and puffed with redoubled out effort. At last, Undyne returned, holding a folding knife. Asgore recognized as belonging to Chris. He reflexively looked up into the crowd. Chris was standing in the aisle looking thoroughly unimpressed. Cringe. Asgore smiled at them and turned back to the collapsed skeleton. Ready? He asked. Gaster only wailed incoherently in return. Ah, uh, well, Asgore said. Just think of it as a visit to the dentist. Scene end. Mayor Holiday slithered across the rain-slicked hospital parking lot, beckoned by the taillights of her still-running 1995 Mercedes Cungadero. We need a full stop there. Her PR smile was still in the process of sliding from her face. Or fading from her face. I can't breathe help. I guess it's working. <laughs> oh, we got a new Gaster rap name. That's going in. King Dings. This will go down in history as one of the... I like the implication here is that Gaster has been called all of these at one point in the past, but continuously rebrands uh, re himself when he doesn't find success. <laughs> and he's on like the fifth one. Hmm. King Dings is Asgore and Gaster's ship name, Andrew. And this information affects me how? Uh. He made 16 previous albums. It's true. I'll call him King Dings so I can add that as an AO3 tag and people will think it's the ship. Why is why is that a, an existing ship, by the way? Is that a real thing, or did you just make that up? Like, that that's one of the most obscure fucking ships I can even imagine. Like, someone's probably done it, but... you cowards don't even wave hands. Yeah. They do kiss. It's a real thing. <laughs> it is real! That's true, they kiss. Uh, it's all there, really. The ship is alive. Hand plates, does it? What the fuck? I didn't know hand plates got that wild. I've heard it got kind of wild, but I didn't. I didn't know like that. That kind of deal. Okay. When does this occur? Is Asgore like cheating on Toriel with Gaster? What? What's happening? Anyway.
So I guess I'm going to do like a sort of like Outsen's Umris fic and just have this whole like um, denouement play out during the car ride. Gaster comes in like, what the fuck does that say? E F G H uh G I I I I I again maybe not quite B those aren't even real wingdings but I I I know what you meant. He's throwing hands. Oh the lo fi. It is not an obscure ship. You, you can't just say that and expect me to like know what you mean. It's not an Asgore and Gaster is not an obscure ship. This is the music now. Actually, no. Okay, I'm kidding. What if Asgore and Gaster had a divorce in this? <laughs> Umris is more consistent than this. Internally or externally? Internally, yes. But this is closer to Deltarune canon. Gaster constantly has a buck bumble play no matter what in the hospital bed he has it from like a Bluetooth speaker. Bum to the bum to the bum to the base. Bippity buck bumble. Okay. The day had not gone well. Um, I guess Nerdly is her driver now. It could have been Naps to Blook, but... W what do you like better, chat? Nerdly or Naps to Blook as the driver? He's trying to freestyle under anesthetics. <laughs> There's no way Nerdly can drive? Oh, that's true. That's true, Nerdly is too young to drive, so it has to be Naps to Blook. It was it was established previously that the priest the police are basically um Mayor Holiday's private chauffeurs, but Noelle's turned traitor now because Spamton red pilled her on the um the concept of a utopian uh, anti narcotic police state. Nerdly has a license exclamation mark question mark uh, says Algie's Hatchel with another two bucks. No, that's what that's what we established. Yes. Nerdly is far too young to drive. That's exactly why Nerdly should drive. Uh, Naps to Blick is funny though. I I I like Naps to Blick actually. <laughs> Whoever's driving needs to get the banana. Napster Blue, get the banana. Get the banana, Napster Blue. Napster Blue's funnier because they don't have hands. Yeah, yeah. Nerdly should also be there. Okay, Nerdly can be in the car too, fine. In the back seat, though. Maybe it's Holiday and, and Nerdly in the back seat, then um, uh, Napster Blue's driving. We just need new verbs every time she moves. Um. As she approached the cards, rear door was swung open by Nerdly. She osmosed inside. Naps the book accelerated out of the lot. Uh, what does Nerdly look like? A good question.
I don't know. Does anyone know? Uh, Temi, Tem, Temziod's suggestion. Uh, where is that? Oh, there it is. Napsta hits the accelerator and immediately faces at the back of the car because they're incorporeal. We've already used that joke, though. That, that's a good joke, but we've already used it. It's like a birdly palette swamp. Like red birdly. Green Mario! Okay, it's red birdly in a in a rumpled suit. Uh, if that ever comes up, uh, maybe maybe I will one day describe what birdly or nerdly looks like. Nerdly, get the apple, magnesium. Uh, that's LG Satchel pays two dollars to to receive that that narration. Magnesium. Do apples have magnesium? I think they have cyanide in them, actually. They probably have magnesium. Thanks for that. Uh, now, we, we need Nerdly to speak as like kind of a Smithers type presence to report the, uh, the, um, like, like Oatsin said, the approval rating has dropped to 75% from 99.9. .9. What's the damage? He asks nerdly, staring straight ahead. He should use increasingly complex hand gestures to convey everything. Or so nerdly doesn't speak, he just gestures at figures and makes hand signs. I like that, actually. Maybe we can work with that. Oh shit, I confirmed that she has a nose. Oh no, is that too specific? Likelihood down from 75% down to 70. Down from how do I phrase this? Down to 75% from Unbelievable, she mutters. What's the organ some fish use to detect uh, electric currents? Is that the lateral line? This might be the longest stream uh, making fanfic series. Uh, we're up to five and a half hours. The last 
stream was broken in two, but that was like over six hours, I think. That went for quite a while. Apples do have magnesium. Okay, noted. Uh, okay, so she like thinks that um, it was uh, it's lucky that Gaster didn't die, otherwise Sans would get even more sympathy votes. The organ is Ampulie. Ampulie? Alright. I'll try it. Oops. Ampulie. I just see the lyrics of standing here I realize now in chat. Very cool. Unbelievable, she mutters. All she could do is be thankful. in the lyrics of standing there I realize <laughs> why <laughs> hmm Halloween Armstrong Sympathy votes for Sans would have been disastrous. Am I writing an essay? No, I'm writing a fan fiction. Did you see the title of the stream? That's a nice argument, Mayor. Why don't you back it up with the source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. <laughs> That's when Asgore slash King Harkonnen uh, wins the election. <laughs> you should make Halloween hand it to Gaster that his bars are fire, even if he's an idiot. That's funny. Can I use this for my school essay? If you want. It wouldn't apparently be the first time I was cited in an academic paper. That's a terrifying thought that I have to live with every day. Um, but you can if you want. You've seen thumbnails for these streams, you're not sure how you could catch up. Um, if you wanted to speed run through it, you could get the link and just read through the document. Um, take, doing a recap at this point, I mean, it, we're up to like 23 pages here. Uh, it takes too long to recap the whole thing constantly. So you'll either have to rewatch the streams or um, read the document in your spare time at this point, I'm afraid. I was cited in what? Uh, someone in the Discord server made a... Um, I'm not sure exactly what the nature of it was. It was a university-level uh, academic research paper. And they cited my um, Undertale video. Because apparently that's something you can do nowadays. And people won't make fun of you for it. Or expel you from school. Or 
failure in the course or anything. It's a modern world. The link. Uh, let me get the link. Link is in chat. All I ask is that you do not request to edit, because that spams my inbox. And I have said that if anyone tries that in the stream, I will ban your account from the stream. Okay, we're back. I can pin it? I can pin stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, the link is now pinned. Wonderful. Hmm. So how do I now go back and explain the details of what happened? Uh, the current situation was hardly better. Not only had Sans's PR stunt, um... Uh... Not only had Sans's PR stunt and subsequent medical drama... <laughs> Not only had Sansa's PR stunt and subsequent medical emergency catapulted his non-existent platform to the front-runner candidate for the uh, disillusioned meme youth, <laughs> irony poisoned. How would this be actually regarded, though? The irony poisoned, uh... I, I want to make it clear that Sans is like the meme vote now. The irony poisoned apathetic youth demographic. The Doomers. The meme youth, dude. For the dirtbag left outs and says. You, you're going harder than I am at this. Uh, Uh, internet infected. If Alex Yeek was in Electron Tokung, who would he vote for? I don't know. I don't really know anything about Alex Yeek yet. Dirtbag left was what they used to call Chapo and the like. I understand. I say not understanding. <laughs> Oh, 
Like cum town. Ah, yes, just like that. Disaffected is better. All right. But Asgore's heroic efforts... What would you call the procedure? It's an actual podcast. Yes, come town. Uh, I've heard of it. I don't really know what it's about, uh, except that it's not what the name implies. Is Mayor Holiday aware that Sans was a decoy? Uh, probably. I'm not sure. It needs to be addressed. Either, either yes, or it just inexplicably fools everyone. No one can tell it's different. Because Sans never changes expression or moves anyway. Hometown is going to turn into an oligarchy. It already is. Mayor Holiday and her fracking platform control the town. No one can tell because everyone's just a sprite. That's that's also kind of the joke, yeah. That's kind of the joke. Uh, had positioned him as a viable alternative. Asgore's heroic effort in reattaching Gaster's arm had positioned him as a viable, rough-and-tumble alternative to her own brand of calculated efficiency. Uh, we need to specify how, though. Th arm through... Determination suture? We should- I just want to throw that out so people know, like, how fucking deranged this- this was. Determination crystals. Have I referenced that before? Why do you know about determination crystals? Or was that completely out of context? So determination and dark fountains are just known in this canon. Yes, of course. I have talked about determination crystals. Ah, okay. Yeah. That was a, a plot point in the fan game that I worked on in 2016. It was not one that I enjoyed. Um, I fought bitterly with the project lead about it. Um, and caused immense havoc and internal uh, strife. Anyway. Let's not get into that anymore. Dream Reborn? Oh god, I wish I worked on Dream Reborn. No, 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 this was something else. That Dream Reborn fan game never came out, did it? The end? With the weird looking bird creature? It was all gastery. They had, uh, who is the guy? Sean Evans? Uh, uh, the composing for it? I forget his name. I think it might have been Sean Evans. And then they had DM DeCuro after he left. It was quite a thing. Sorry for the psychic damage, Andrew. No problem. Uh, oh yeah, we should just point out that Gaster's arm is still goopy and needs to rest.
Uh, okay, we need to work in some details, like, from the hospital, uh, somehow. Yeah, you're right, Otsin, you're right. Though his arm did still look a bit goopy when she dropped by to visit, and a cruel part of her wondered if Asgore's approval rating would sink again if it ended up falling off. There we go. Oh, it's in some meme that ended, moral of the story, none. I liked that, do that at the end. Good idea. The moral of the story is that G-Money has bars. though. Uh, okay. Um, well, I want to get... What's his face? Terry? Terry reference in here? Can you imply that Nerdly is mute as a result of punishment for failing Halloween? <laughs> That's fucked up. Moral of the story, don't let your furry GF make you participate in an election. Unless you're in, I don't know, Northern Finland. It would probably work in that case. Terry does a flip. Uh, yeah, we can reference Asgore, it was in the hospital, and then Terry was angry. Uh, maybe. Um, okay. How do I get... Terry in here. Uh, is Asgore still getting phone calls while Gaster's in the hospital? Oh yeah, maybe maybe we can actually go to Gaster and Asgore in the hospital, or like Sans and Asgore in the hospital or something. Uh, and then, then that's how we can get a bit more detail, that's when we can have Terry appear. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's fucking nasty in chat. Who is that girl who kept asking me all those questions? Was she from the press? That was your daughter, Mrs. Holiday. She's visiting your husband. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's going in. <laughs>
Uh, hang on. You kept asking me questions. Nerdily, she asked, who was that girl at the hospital who kept asking me questions? Was she with the press? I don't recognize her from the usual suspects. Nerdly returned a puzzled look. At length, Napsablik piped up from the driver's seat. That was your uh, daughter, I think. Des is dead. I thought my daughter was out of the picture. No, like Noel though. I have another daughter? <laughs> is Des dead? We haven't quite decided what happened to Des. It's, it's up in the year currently. Des is away. Uh, Halloween scowled. I see. <laughs> that was your daughter, I, th I think, really shows how nobody seems sure what's up with Des. No, like, uh, Noel was in the hospital visiting Rudy. That's the premise of this. She told me she's been visiting Rudy after class. Implied that Calloween had her killed. She looks older than I remember. Haha, <laughs> you got the good lines. This is good. Um, it seems like I know it's funnier if Nerdly doesn't talk, but it would be really convenient now if Nerdly went like, uh, so what do we do, Miss Holiday? And then she's like, we go to war. I think that needs to happen. near the gate of the holiday residence. Uh, 
uh, nerdly fidgeted nervously. Well, what, what now, Miss Holiday? Nerdly speaks in yes, no text prompt. He speaks in Fortnite emotes. Oh yeah, okay. Halloween responds with a hand sign? That means go to war. Nerdly speaks in angry tweets about the Smash Bros roster. That's the worst line in Halo 3. Oh, I can just lampshade it. Okay, yeah, good suggestion there. Teh. He performed an intricate series of hand signals that indicated something along the lines of Well, what now, Miss Holiday? Steepled her. Uh, what's a thing? Fingers, but not. It's nerdly signaling just the guy writing the whiteboard meme. <laughs> Suction cups. That's that's the best I've seen, yeah. Suction cups. Uh all right, suction cups. We go to war. Another two dollars from Algie Satchel. Stay on that Father Garcia grind set, which uh, they then clarify later on as a faith reference. Thank you, Algie Satchel. But uh, I continue to not really get faith references. Hooves? But that's like the normal headcanon. You know what's, what's a weird thing that, that kind of, I don't know how I feel about it, that I see in art, um, is when you get like one of the holidays illustrated with five fingers, but the fingers halfway through uh, are just black at the ends, as if each one of them individually terminates in a hoof. And it's, um, I, I know what they're trying to do, it just seems like such a strange way to convey that, <laughs> where they just look like they've dipped their fingers halfway into a pool of chocolate. Set up Terry. Uh, I think I'll have to set up Terry in a later scene with Asgore. We go to war. Scene end. They haven't fully evolved the hands yet, yeah. They have, uh, we're, b we're back to Moog's Gitchy Fingers. Was in the previous stream, I spent like half an hour trying to find a picture of Moog's finger, the Lord of Blood. Uh, it's like that, but all five of their fingers are just like horns that come out of uh, finger nubs. <laughs> what? Says Outsin. <laughs> what? Uh, never mind. Never mind.
Hmm. I'm not sure if I can start a next scene now. The stream has been going for six hours at this point. That's a rather long time. What scene now? We should decide what scene to do at least, yeah. Um, are we back to Asgore in the hospital? We haven't seen... Uh, yeah, we need to go back to Asgore before too long, I think. Ah, I can see it. Clear as day. The coming of our mayoral candidacy. Mogwe! Yeah. Oh, no more music. Asgore and his, uh... At his side is Spamton. All right, Asgore and Spamton in uh, in the hospital, and then they get confronted by Terry. Maybe, maybe focus on another town denizen just to get a sense of how the public feels about this stuff. Uh, I'm not sure. Like maybe eventually we can use like, like a point of view character for that. Yeah, I wonder. I've been trying to kind of skim over that stuff for now. How do we access the doc? You click the link that is pinned in the stream chat. Undyne and Asgore and Spamton. Ah, yes, their little, their cabal is growing. With the press. A press, they were just at a press conference though. Um, does the hometown have a newspaper? There's no one who's actually known to be in the press. It would have to be like uh, original characters. Is Susie alive? Susie is just going through the whole plot of Umris with the Birdly currently. That's that's what I've decided. Or that's what sort of chats decided Then I've jumped on the bandwagon of. Have someone insult nerdly, then he says the Navy SEALs copy pasta. This LG Sagels for four dollars. Or I mean five dollars actually, thank you. Um the entire Navy SEALs copy pasta. That would have to be a gag we build up to. It's like nerdly is mute. For the entire story, it seems like he's actually just canonically mute, and then at the very end, uh, he recites the entire Navy SEALs copy past a word for word, unabbreviated. That could actually be very funny, but we have to build up to that. Yo, it's three dollars from Wolfsode now, who's finally finished piloting the Sky Crane or whatever. Uh, hey, what's up? I'm here. I'm glad you're here, Wolfsode. Unfortunately, the, the stream is close to ending now. Homunculus clone of Birdly. Um, the thing is, I very recently just reread the entire new section, so I don't know if I it's worth doing another recap even. Hmm, it's a bit of an odd point to end the stream on, but, it, you know, six hours. Uh, Everything's better when there's a homunculus involved. Papyrus is suddenly the, the the press. Yeah, Papyrus is a journalist and no one asks questions. I love it. Okay. But wait, that, that puts Papyrus, Sands, and Gaster in one room together, potentially, in the hospital. Maybe I don't really want to deal with that. That's kind of a, a weird dynamic to have to address all of a sudden. It's Prunzel. That'll work. Yeah, Prunzel's good. Oh, oh, or we use Alfie's blog, which just gets posted to the library wall. I like that. Like, she's the closest thing to a journalist because she has the library newsletter. Alfie's and Noel are the only confirmed press, and it's all either anime or games journalism. <laughs> Did it even establish that Gaster is Sans's manager? No. Well, he's not really. Like, that's what that's what Sans told the front desk he was, but actually he was just there to promote his album, and he has no relation to his campaign. Gaster was not supposed to bring Sans any votes, but he just did by accident. All right, well, let's write the premise for the next scene, and then we'll get back to it next time.
It says a screenplay now. All right. Rudy and Noel are also there, maybe. What the dub is that true? You go, big guy. I don't know why chat just said that, but okay. Chris should come by. They can get involved in Asgore and Spamton's campaign. This is going to be a massive scene. We're going to have Asgore, Undyne, Spamton, Chris, Alfie's. Gaster in the next room, uh, and Terry, and also Noel and Rudy in another room. Hmm. Would it be too fucked up if I just wrote a page in the screenplay format? That would be pretty funny. <laughs> That's the kind of thing you get in like really weird fan fictions written by 11 year olds. It's just like they start writing it as a screenplay and don't realize. Oh yeah, Chris comes to get the knife back. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. That'll be the next scene. That's fertile ground there. Is Terry Jerry? No, Terry's Terry. Have you played Deltarune, sir? Is the knife still in Gaster's arm? Uh, I like to imagine that if you take the knife out, uh, then the you need to keep it in for the arm to stay soft. Maybe it's like that. There's David Foster Wallace stories that are just stage directions, or rather writing notes. Sounds like a cool guy. I'm sure I could pull it off if he can do it. Sans is still eating the whipped cream they took from Sans, just to remind the reader of that scene. That's disgusting, that was a day ago. If you take out the knife, the arm immediately turns into a puddle. Uh, we are not getting the fingers in his ass scene. Alright, I think we should call it here. We, we need to avoid the fingers in his ass scene at all costs. It doesn't do anything to Gaster, he's just in immense pain. <laughs> fan art. Oh yes, of course, the fan art. Let's go. I have been pinged in media. Why? Oh, the poison dance is the Fortnite default dance inspiration. What, really? The video is content from SME was blocked and then okay, I'll watch that later. Uh Oh my god, yeah, we got some art. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that. A lot of art. Um even more art. Yet more art. Is that a Hotline Miami parody? Holy shit. I don't even know what that is, but it's art, I guess. Another one. Another one. <laughs> Another one. Uh, an even further rendered version of Mooks's, uh, the, the, the triptych illustration. And uh, a Mooks one to f oh my god, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pieces of art. We've exceeded the previous streams by a factor of like 4 here, I don't know what happened. Maybe particularly evocative imagery, maybe the stream was just really boring so everyone wanted to spend the time making art? I don't know. Um, oh shit, that's my Discord. I meant instead 
to show this. I don't think there's anything incriminating on the Discord. Um, okay, that's the that's for the end. Okay, so we're just gonna go through this whole list here. This shit is good. Um, actually, let me get the Discord in the other window so I can see who these came from. Because these all had different artists, of course. So this is from, uh, how do I say that? G F D G S G X G Z G D R C. Discord user that. Uh, Gasker says, "Yo, let's uh, get darker yet darker uh, against the light." It's uh, much s against the light, it's much starker. Yo, let's get darker and darker against the light, it's much starker. So he's rapping in Wingdings. What, stream impending? Shit. I keep doing it to myself. And Spamton is also there. Uh, the, the depiction of the meeting room is the funniest part of this whole scene. <laughs> I just noticed in the back the, the shitty, like, round um, U-shaped table. The whitewashed room with, like, the gray-ass dusty carpet. That's perfect. I hate this man, but his rapping is fire. Evacuate the building. Okay. <laughs> That's the first of many depictions of uh, Dub G here. Our man, that that's wonderful. I, I love that art actually, but I love all of this art. Like, look at this one. It's like Yosho, what's his name? Amano drew this. This is like Kefka Gaster. His drip is off the scale. His fashion choices have been scattered across space and time here. That, that that's a fantastic depiction of Gaster, and that one is from um, VT Holmes who I either didn't know or I forgot did visual art. In either case, it's very impressive and I like it. Winglings. All right, now we have a whole fucking scene of disarray here from Doc. Here comes the grub. It's it's just Sans mic spamming, here comes the grub. <laughs> While the other candidates do literally anything else. Fuck yes, he's saying what we're all thinking. Yeah. Here comes the grub. <laughs> that was another direction you could have taken it. Sans just mic spamming the whole time. Like, just every three sentences, Sans inserts, here comes the grub, and everyone ignores him. That would have been a bit too distracting, even for, like, our standards, though, I think. He's saying what we're all thinking. <laughs> here comes the grub. Um, and this is a another one from Doc, which is a, a gaster gif. Which is... <laughs> Gaster doing the Dougie or whatever the fuck. I'm assuming that's what the Dougie is, maybe? I don't know. Uh, look at that. Three dollars from Wolfzode. I got sunburned while working. We dug three holes. Hell yeah. I've dug holes before at work. As one working man to another, I respect your hole digging abilities. I've dug so many holes, you don't even know. That's cool though, thanks for the, the dono. What do you mean Gangnam Style? That's the Dougie. I'm not forklift certified, no. But I do drive a tractor sometimes. Uh, here's another one from Marnie now. Another depiction of uh, WDG <laughs> in the house. This is more of a blorbified version of it. it. It's not my canonical nine foot tall um, like toffee man, toffee puller man. Why am I digging holes to plant things in? Yes, I have driven a tractor. Uh, which is wonderful nonetheless. The blobgaster here from Marnie. Uh, and I think this is a Hotline Miami parody? I'm not sure, but it, that's what it looks like to me. It's like Hotline Miami. Uh, uh Elekton Tokung. With uh, a 
like at one of those someone built a sand sculpture out of Lego bricks. Uh, spam tin, and then Asgore's on the phone looking. That that's like a sick art style, actually. That was by Rata in the Discord server. Uh, oh, who's uh, who's gross, gross? How do you pronounce that? Gross, grosses zero, grosses zero, maybe in chat. That's me. Same person did this. It's vaguely hot on Miami, yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be the cutout of Sans. I got that. It's, uh, somehow this looks like um, one of those like plastic pixel art things that people do, where you like you iron the little studs together. Are those Merkel hands? I don't know, but Spamton's Merkel hands. That it, it's a great looking piece of art, though. Thank you. And now we have <laughs> Robert Clovert's uh, abstract impressionist. Um, it might be a gaster. It it could be a gaster. No one actually knows. And then the double footnote. Wonderful. It's supposed to be like the Saul Goodman promo pic. Oh, I see. Yeah, the, the Breaking Bad references are lost on me because I have not watched the show, believe it or not. How long has Spamton's nose at this point? Uh, it's still a half meter from last time. He hasn't been referenced yet again. Gastar. Uh, here's a biblically accurate holiday, once again from VT Holmes. Um, that's about right. That's about what we're dealing with here. Just like an abstract kind of Aztec uh, mural. That's as close as you could get to drawing her. That's uh, very cool though. That's Sahara Ishtvala. I don't know who that is. Sounds dope though. Uh, we have the the daily outsin banger. <laughs> Asgore with the sans prop. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep having my turn until <laughs> someday you gotta learn when to quit, kid. Beautifully realized. <laughs> That's nerdly. Yeah, doing doing the Chris Redfield. <laughs> That's exactly how I pictured him. You nailed it, Outson. You nailed it. He's on like 15 caffeine patches and Adderall, just like processing metrics like a Google AI right now. Live election model plus 32 holiday monsters 90% plus 30 holiday Aquarian mammal avian humans 10% plus 35 holiday. <laughs> All the stats are so precise. We have the endorsements. Holidays in... Is that California? Is that Los Angeles? I guess. Or is that Northern British Columbia? Could be either, honestly. That could be like in, in Nelson or something. I don't know. It's Vermont. Oh. It does look a little bit like BC, I have to say. Oh, right, because Vermont is canon from uh, Umris. Right. It's just birdly with round glasses. <laughs> and uh, that gaster is absolutely terrifying. That's that's a real that's a lot to take in with that. The nose ring pierced into just the smooth facial bone. There's some other fucking political manuscript I don't even know on the table there. Uh, I'm surprised it's not Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality. But it's something else. WDG. Somehow he looks like a SoundCloud rapper. He like I can picture like Post Malone's face superimposed over this. He has like the vibe of of Post Malone, who is not a SoundCloud rapper, but you know he looks like one. Somehow it just works. But uh, absolutely wonderful, Outson. I love it every time. But yet there's more. This is a, another even more abstract, even more impressionist piece from Robert Clover, which expands upon the previous work in something. This is like a, like a cruelty squad wall texture is the genre of this piece. Here comes the grub. Cringe. Check out WDG's 
footnote 4.5 17th album him on SoundCloud. <laughs> Naps to blue, get to the banana. Wait, this is, um, yeah, this is like modern Picasso or something. It looks like the Picasso painting about the World War II bombing. Exactly what I was thinking. A wonderful aesthetic. Uh, I don't exactly know how to describe it, but that only is um, a point in its favor. And here is, uh, th this is the same piece of art that Mooks has been working on this whole time. It, it gets more beautiful each time. It it's, it's essentially um, ascending the commission tiers, is what I can picture this as. It's gone from an unshaded sketch to a colored sketch, and now it's being fully rendered with like bloom and shading. Um, it, it looks beautiful. And I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's not uh, WIP any longer. And finally, we have Mooks' own interpretation of WDD. <laughs> yeah, and uh, them and Toby are uh, on the speaker at the back. That's wonderful. That's simply wonderful. <laughs> Uh, LG Satchel would post art, but needs to verify their account. Uh, we The Discord server no longer uses verification. You can just join and post the art. You can just do it. Um, but thank you for the $2 donation. Did I get another ping from media? What is this about? Oh, no, it was the same ping. Never mind. Oh wait, there's, there's been more fan art since I started reading the fan art? You gotta cool down, guys. Uh, we, we have Birdly, or no, Nerdly again. Uh, this is one from Blue NSL. Of, uh, of Nerdly <laughs> in the back of the room. What does that badge say? Halloween? It's like, I vote Halloween badge. <laughs> reading. Talking points. Mr. Dreamer Blackmail. Oh, it's just superimposed on the Google Doc. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. That's good shit. Uh, the blackmail will become canon. Don't worry, we'll get there. We have uh, yet another WDG interpretation from uh, Smuto. I'm not sure I've seen Smuto in the server, but I sure as hell see them now. Making a big debut with this fucking thing. The facial tats. Uh, yeah, the, the lines are actually, they're not fractures or anything, it's just facial tattoos. Um, an inverted cross to match the right side up cross on his necklace, and also wallet chain, which has not been represented, unfortunately. Um, lorem ipsum doset on the face, <laughs> which is not only the funny placeholder text, but it references the concept of pain, which is a reference to the unused strings in Deltarune's files. It's very deep, it's very deep. Um, that's excellent. This could be a, a like a, an FNF mod right here. The proportions are all right. The, the gangly ass, new grounds ass limbs. It's perfect. Apparently, LG Satchel needs to verify their account. Are you trying to join my server, like my my Discord server, right? And it's telling you to verify your account. There is no longer any verification check. Like all the channels are accessible to anyone who joins the server now. If it's telling you to verify, then I don't know how because I kicked the bot, but just ignore that. Rejoining the server should not do anything because the permissions are set that people with any role can access uh, all the channels currently. Wait, I'm pinged in general now. Is it secretly more art or is it something else? Oh, it's an unrelated message. But thank you, Irving the Fourth, for the, the nice message. Um, okay. What happened to his left foot? Uh, it fell off, snapped off. Uh, okay. Hey, was there any more? No, that was the last piece of art. All right. That's fantastic. Uh, thank you everyone for that ridiculous turnout for fan art at the end of the stream. That's some crazy good fan art. Like all this shit. There's so much good stuff. Um, 
that that kind of makes me feel better about spending so long on that one scene. That was like the, the slowest and longest scene ever, but if people liked it enough to make like 15 pieces of art for it, then I guess it was worth it. That's all good. Um, all right. Thank you all. I'll see you next Sunday as normal. I won't forget next time, hopefully. And yes. Thanks everyone who donated too. Lots of donations. Um, I, I'm a bit, I, almost a bit self-conscious about the number of donations now from Algae Satchel. You can uh, just don't feel obliged to give me money is all I'll say. Like I, I'm happy to read everyone's messages in chat regardless of the donations, although I do appreciate them. Uh, but please just don't, don't break your bank or, you know, not pay rent on my account for God's sake, please. Uh, having said that, two dollars from Doc Breeb. Am I the cool music guy for this? Yes, you're the cool music guy. 100%. Uh, all right. Well, that's it. I'll see y'all next time. Stream is over. Bye-bye.